And that's the whole point. Is that we, there wasn't a space race. There was a big up yours. We're gonna we're gonna show you Russia. We can throw things up in space and have it come down without killing people. Yeah. Oh, we have a roving mic. So if you want to talk, I will ask questions of the audience, or the audience can come and ask questions or give experiences and really help. So, and Ron will be the roving micer. Yes. This is Ron Patton, my executive producer. This is Gene Dow. He is, he, he's an angel. Um, they're, they're, yeah. I always talk about I want to pr bring proof of the paranormal. He's as paranormal as you get. <laughs> yes, he's amazing. He does, he, uh, general manager of KSVP and KEND. Yes, both. Yeah, so he's got a lot of work on his hands for radio stations, but he's really awesome, so. Oh, is he here? No, he's back in the place. I'll tell you, but I sent him a picture. Oh, okay. And he said, hi. Milton and I were going to come here, and we couldn't come, so. But he dressed up as Heisenberg. That's what Trump is. I guess you know what that means. Yes, it does. Okay, because I sure don't. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't tell you what I just laughed at. Are you easily offended? So we were, uh, we were, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a coffee snob from the Northwest, right? So I have to have coffee, like, almost intravenous into my body. So I just told Tom, the guy that does running for the station, to get me a coffee. And we went and got coffee earlier, and he said that he didn't like Starbucks. And I said, why not? And he says, I just don't like the smell. And I said to him, I says, well, you know, I says, it's either that or Grandma's underwear. What do you think? And so he sent me a text saying, I'm bringing Grandma's underwear. <laughs> huh? How do you know that? Oh, I did it? Okay. Oh, that's great. <laughs> right. If you're an agent from where, who knows where, or even an alien, you'll be on camera. Oh, my God. It's 8 o'clock. Six minutes till air? Right? No, it's uh, it's two minutes See after I right now. This right tonight. Testing. Hello. <clears throat> Are we still going to have the phones available if I need them? Are you? Yeah, I have the phone lines on right now, and okay. I'll screen if we get them. Good. 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 If you want, I can just uh, take a screenshot on my phone and right. I can text it to you so you can see who's calling. Right. Like the CERN caller last night. <laughs> no joke, that was the only call that we got. Yeah, well, I didn't, I don't know. Yeah, some guy called and said, what are you going to talk about the CERN being fired up? As he's being fired up on the 5th. Oh, well, you should be talking about the CERN thing being fired up. I'm going, we will talk about it, sir. Okay, well, you know, that CERN thing's getting fired up. I know. It's going to be fired up. We want to know if it's going to open up the abyss to hell. Yeah, it will. It's one of those nights where the audience was really good, but you don't want to go to the phones out of courtesy and just happen to have the guy that's, you know, in the, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's the guy in the Greyhound bus depot sitting there going, Well, double! <laughs> Why don't you talk about what I want to talk about? Because we're in Roswell, sir. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I'm a mutant. I don't know. You ever hear my backstory? I have something called tuberous sclerosis. And it affects people in many ways, but what it is, it's a, it's a, mutagen a mutagenic disorder. I can't even say it, mutagenic. 
Mutant genetic disorder, there we go. And what it does is it can affect people either giving them seizures or it can give them visions or it can make them, you know, handicapped or whatever. With me, it's, it affects my skin, it gives me tumors, and I have little calcifications on my brain. And so what that does is for some reason where they're placed in the brain gives me this amazing amount of recall. So I can recall, if I hear somebody say this, I can recall anything they say I go back to my Rolodex to see if I can remember it, and I remember it. Or I can get on the internet and I can go, I can basically type in a name to make sure that I'm right. We're on in one it, minute. Have it do that. But I usually go off memory. It's all about memory. And I read a lot, but yeah. One minute warning. One minute warning. Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. Tonight, we're live at the International UFO Museum and Research Center. Look, big audience tonight. Yes! You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. A lot of enthusiastic fans that are piling in. We're glad to have them here at the International UFO Museum and Research Center. We moved into the museum tonight rather than being outside. We were, we were having fun with the uh, loud motorcycles and the loud cars, and they're still loud. I can still hear them through the glass. But anyway, it's, uh, it's good to be here in Roswell, New Mexico. Again, we're uh, broadcasting live and loud, uh, and we're, we're happy to be here. KSVP Artesia and KEND Roswell, they, they make us uh, loud and clear here in Roswell and Artesia. Um, and last night we had a remarkable show with Donald Schmidt, talking with him about Roswell. I mean, he's always good to talk to because he's the one that's been doing the investigating for the long time, for the longest time. And um, I've in the past talked about the summer of 1947. Uh, sincerely, this 75 year anniversary not only is respective of the Roswell crash, but also the summer of the saucers, where the saucer stories 
from Maury Island to uh, Kenneth Arnold and his sightings. And of course, uh, those were the famous, they weren't called saucers then, they were flying objects uh, over Mount Rainier, which eventually, uh, it's eventually brought us to uh, brought us to the apparent saucer crash in Roswell, New Mexico, and it happened July 8th, 1947. The radio reports, and if you've listened to, I mean, there have been plenty of documentaries, there have been plenty of, uh, I don't know, retrospectives, I mean, you name it, and they always play that radio report. He said, this is a special edition, July 8th, 1947. The Army Air Force has announced that a flying disc has been found in Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright-Patterson Field for further inspection. I mean, I've heard that so many times that I have it memorized. And the radio reports did say that it was a flying disc. It was in the possession of the Army. The Army Air Force was combined at the time. And it was at Roswell, New Mexico, sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio for further inspection. Now, prior to 1947, UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, it was a term that was coined by the military, UFO, or the basically the, the uh, intelligence ops, UFOs did not exist in 1947. Aliens didn't exist in 1947. Okay, we need to remember that. And the reason why is because the minute you start using the alien word, the minute you start using the flying saucer or the UFO word, immediately people think you're crazy. But if you go back in time and you eliminate all the mythology, you eliminate all the speculation, you can realize the attitude that the people had back in the 1940s. This was something they had never seen before. This is something they had never experienced before, okay? And it's often my, it's been my uh, observation that if this was such a top secret affair, okay, then why is it the military didn't know anything about it? Okay, think about that for a moment. If it was a top secret balloon, then why did a farmer find it in the middle of nowhere and report it to the Army Air Force? If it was such a top secret balloon or a top secret thing, why on earth was it on every picture splashed on the Roswell Daily Record? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. If it was a weather balloon and it was a top secret weather balloon, Every member of the 509th bombing group at Roswell had, Q, had high clearances because why? They were loading atomic bombs onto planes. So if they all had high clearances, how the hell did they not figure out that this was something that, you know, came out of the sky and it was a balloon or some other secret project? This is where the Air Force's 1994 report, in my opinion, goes into dispute. Because in, in 1994, when they released the 1997 case closed uh, report, they were saying that there was something called Project High Dive, and it was Project Mogul, and that both were compartmentalized together by the people, that crashes uh, of test aircraft and people dying was all smeared together in a 10-year period. But then they say, that they mistook the anthropomorphic dummies being thrown off of these balloons as aliens. Mogul had nothing to do with anthropomorphic aliens or anthropomorphic dummies. So they think we're the dummies, right? They, they, the, the Air Force thinks we're dummies because we can't figure out that whatever happened, now think about this for a moment. Let's, let's look at the, the 75 years, where we are now 75 years after Roswell. And let's make a comparison here. So. 75 years ago, something crashes at Roswell, or Corona, okay? The military didn't know what it was, and so they made this weather balloon story up. Now, here we are, you know, looking at this, wondering what happened after that. What happened after that is the Army and the Air Force split, which created a new branch of the military, the CIA and the NSA were organized. A new security apparatus was organized in order to, you know, keep intelligence close. And let's go 75 years later. 2007, 2014, 2017, we find out that our military is being visited by Tic Tacs, these UFOs. 
No one knows what they are. They're wondering if they're Russian. They're wondering if they're Chinese. They're wondering if they're, you know, whatever. So what happens? President Trump creates the Space Force. The Space Force is just another branch of the military, another branch of the Air Force. Do we need it? That's anyone's guess. His detractors will say, no, it's a waste of time. But now, not only did we have that organization, the Space Force, but then we created a security task force, part of the security apparatus that analyzes and sends reports out about UAP and UFOs, just like in 1947, okay? And then they transferred, and I, I forgot to say this, back in 1947, they transferred all of the crash stuff to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Just recently, Space Force announced that Wright-Patterson Air, Air Force Base is gonna organize something called Delta 18, which is gonna be a new task force to observe UAP and UFOs in their element. So here we go for, full circle with what happened here in Roswell 35 years ago and what's happening today. Something is happening. It's amazing to be alive and we're here to witness it. I'm Clyde Lewis. We're here at the museum, the UFO Museum right here in Roswell, New Mexico. Thank you all for coming out and we'll be right back. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshares. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, well, you need my help. Hello, I'm Charles Child, founder and CEO of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. And the process started what's now called the timeshare cancel industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. Sounds crazy, right? Well, the crazy thing is, this never ends. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. I guarantee if we can't cancel your timeshare, you'll pay nothing. Were you lied to when buying a timeshare and want out? Get the facts about timeshare cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free information kit. 800-969-1199. 800-969-1199. 800-969-1199. Paid for by government.com. Have you heard? The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 1-800-888-7630 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% .9 pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened. But with limited quantities, you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-888-7630. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-888-7630 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-888-7630. Don't do what I did and run out. If it's working, don't quit. Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite... No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters... When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite... Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomo Flea free. Nomo Flea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomo Flea free this week at Dynavite.com. Oh! Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 
If your car is no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. Lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild, replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense. And a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment. And with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco. Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans, about the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-897-9537. That's I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero live from Roswell. You know what's nice is I'm able to explain why I do what I do on the show to the audience. So if you're hearing me talking to the audience and telling them this is how I do it, you know, it's kind of nice to have an audience to kind of explain what I do because uh, a lot of people, when they listen, they either are confused or they wonder why I do what I do, and I just do it. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I have the support. And I've been doing this now since uh, 1995. And I was here for the 50th anniversary. Yes, I was. Three bouts of cancer later, an almost heart attack later, I'm back for the 75. I'm happy. I'm really happy to be here. Um, <laughs> although Don says, are you going to be here for the 100th? I go, I don't know. That's a little tough. But uh, certainly, um, it, it, is, it is nice to be here. I love Roswell. I love the people of Roswell. I love... I just love everything about it. It's, it's great. That's why I decided to come by again for the 75th anniversary. Um, as I said, prior to 1947, UFOs did not exist. Now, flying discs and flying saucers existed because Kenneth Arnold talked about a sighting that he had of nine Chevron craft over Mount Rainier. And he said they, they looked like they were saucers skipping along the water. Oh, flying saucer. Okay. And there was another event that happened earlier. It was the Mari Island affair. And that was, they looked like donuts. But that didn't catch on. I don't think flying donuts would work. I mean, it works for Duncan down the street, but not for, not for the newspaper back, back in the day. So flying saucer took hold. And then when they reported what happened in Roswell, they called it a flying disc. And what's interesting, the only aliens we worried about back in the 1940s were the Soviet Russians. They were the aliens that Americans were being told to be afraid of, not extraterrestrials. So they, it didn't even cross their mind that this would be an extraterrestrial thing. But everything is warped into this unreality of, well, UFOs are no longer a taboo subject for the military, and science is beginning to take it serious, seriously as well. The reports of unidentified aircraft, and of course we have Space Force, and that was, it was actually announced on the 24th, of June. It's July 1st today. So the 24th of June, it was announced that they're going to open this National Space Intelligence Center at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Space Delta 18 is what they're calling it. Now, does anybody see the irony in that? A lot of people who know UFO lore do. Because Wright-Patterson stored, or at least we're told they stored, the alien wreckage and the aliens in a hangar called Hangar 18. So they're calling this Space Delta 18. It's going to be responsible for, and this is what I read, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, Space Delta 18 is going to be responsible for analyzing foreign or unknown threats to the United States in the space domain. The Space Intelligence Center will be co-located with the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. Now, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center has the job of listening to outer space see if anything's out there. It looks to me like Space Delta 18 is going to be responsible for citing these things and reporting them. Whether they be Germans or Soviets or, or Russians or whatever, that's the thing, is that they're going to be... Uh, and, and like I say, you know, th another irony here is 75 years after this cover-up, they're going to be looking at aliens, both foreign uh, and, and out there, right? And under otherworldly, they say. And it's ironic that, and I, I've been, I'm just looking at all these comparisons here, it, it's, it's weird that the fear we had for Russia has returned again. You notice this? 
I mean, and, and here's something else. Do you realize, and I've, I've said this before on my show, and I, and I think it's interesting. Do you realize that when Gorbachev and Reagan were together with their summit, when they wanted to talk about peace, the summit was going nowhere. Nothing was happening. Nothing was working. Then Ronald Reagan said, what if we were attacked by aliens? Would you help us? And Gorbachev said, sure. And Reagan said, we'd help you too. And they started laughing and started talking about comic books and science fiction. And that is what broke the ice when they were trying to get the peace agreements going with Russia. But here we are now, 75 years later, from Roswell on down, some 40 years later from the wall coming down, we're back again to hating Russia. We're back again to UFO Cold War lore. We're back to all that again. Now, how powerful is that? How powerful is it that we can hold that kind of mystery over the heads of people? And it all started with Roswell. So we had a fear of Russia. That went away because of, a, 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 of conversations about aliens. Now here we are having the conversation again about aliens, and we're not friends with Russia anymore. I don't understand. There's something in there that i got to find. There's something in there that I can report, but I'm not sure what it is yet. But we're keeping an eye on China, too. Okay? And they recently reported that their big eye telescope picked up alien signals from the Kepler region, which is the region that's the Goldilocks region that has another Earth in it. So they, their announcement came from the Ministry of Science, and then immediately nothing to see here. This was not a physical Roswell, but it was the Chinese Roswell. Chinese say, we got proof of aliens, we communicated with them. The, the ministry said, go ahead and roll that. Rolls on the internet, immediately gone. There was nothing. And, and so they make this excuse, they're saying, well, it was microwaves from humans, either cell phones or microwave ovens. I had a guest on the show, she was a Chinese scientist, and she said, don't believe that story because when they put that that telescope, that radio telescope in China, they moved people out of that area so they would not have any interference from microwave technologies. So they're telling you that a microwave technology somehow snuck in, a cell phone technology somehow snuck in and threw them a false message. So again, it's like the Chinese Roswell. Um, so Chinese took great pains to cover up the story. And I think it's because, just like Gorbachev said when they asked him about the Ronald Reagan alien story, he said that he didn't feel that it was a weird thing to bring up. The only thing he felt, though, was that the timing was off. Now, what did he mean by that? The timing was off. He, he, was, he was saying this alien invasion thing, saying, well, you know, the timing's off. I think it'll happen later on, maybe, or something to that effect. We've heard Carol Rosen say that Werner von Braun had said the same thing, that in the end, we'll all be told that there's an alien threat. But that, 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 that's all been misquoted, saying it's a fake alien threat. No, the threat is what is fake, not the aliens themselves, the threat. They're saying that the threat does not exist, that there has been no alien threat, that they've been here and they've been helping us and they've been taking care of us and watching us from a distance. Now, that's only part of the story I can tell you because I don't believe that every alien is good and I don't believe that we should feel that every alien is good. I mean, any, any type of civilization, any type of group that's more superior than civilization is coming to is there for the conquering. Just ask Columbus and the, and, and the Native Americans. You know, it didn't mean it didn't do well for the Native Americans when Columbus showed up because they had more power, they had more ships, they had more everything, so they were able to take over. And if this is the same thing happening with the aliens, we better be very cautious. And there's a reason why it's considered a threat to national security because, you know, and I always tell people this because when I when I report UFOs on my show, I say to them, I say I take UFOs very seriously, and everybody should take them seriously because. They're unidentified flying objects. And if something unidentified is heading towards the Earth and you're seeing it heading towards you, you better hope it's aliens. Because if it's anything else, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. 
pr plain and simple. And I think the media knows this. I think the government knows this. And I think that's why we're seeing this upsurge in interest in UAP. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero. We are live in Roswell, New Mexico. Got an audience here. We're very happy to be here. We'll be back with more. Keep it here. Don't go away. SRN News, I'm Tasha Stevens. Biden's top economic advisor says Americans will continue to pay high prices due to the Biden administration's world agenda. When asked on CNN to explain high prices to American families, National Economic Council Director Brian Deese said, quote, what you heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order, and we have to stand firm. End quote. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is authorizing even more money for Ukraine in the form of a new $820 million Ukraine aid package that reportedly includes up to 150,000 rounds of artillery ammo and four counter artillery radars. Uber releases its latest safety report. The rideshare service says sexual assaults dropped 38 percent from 2019 to 2020. The year ridership also dropped due to COVID. They say they fired over 80,000 drivers. This is SRN News. I'm Tasha Stevens. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 928 3355. That's 1 800 928 3355. Or go to SelectQuote.com. 1 800 928 3355. That's 1 800 928 3355. Select Quote. We shop. You save. Full details on example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Speak. Lowering your high blood pressure could save you from a heart attack or stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. It's a new life, but I'm going to make it better. I'm coming back. Ask your doctor. Check your blood pressure. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Did you know that more than half our household energy costs go to heating and cooling? Energy efficiency isn't just good for the environment. It means lower utility bills, too. One way to reduce your energy waste is a home energy assessment. Your utility company can help. Or you can learn how to do it yourself at energysavers.gov. That's energysavers.gov. You'll learn to look for air leaks around windows and doors, check ducts for holes, and improve your insulation. Another time to cut energy costs is when you shop for a new appliance. Look for the Energy Star logo and read the Energy Guide label. And there are day-to-day -day things you can do. Lower your thermostat in winter and raise it in the summer. Close fireplace down.
The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> What's that? What? Sounds like a man out of hell. There it is again. What is it, a meteor? Not unless a meteor can make a U-turn. We've seen something. I've seen something. Hundreds of pilots have seen something. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucers. We have to have 15 million witnesses before anybody's going to look into the problem. Seriously? 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 This is more fantastic than, than flying saucers or, or people from Venus. Roswell. Utterly fantastic. Roswell. Flying saucers. Roswell. Utterly fantastic. Roswell. And then the floodgates of UFO sightings opened wide. People of Earth. Attention. People of Earth. Attention. This is a voice speaking to you from thousands of miles beyond your planet. Alien crash at Roswell. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero live from Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah, we're here. We're happy to be here. Between 1947 and now, we have seen 75 years of cover-up. We have somehow, some way, decided that the UFO phenomenon has become a threatening thread woven into the fabric of contemporary American folklore. As our federal government has lifted off further from its rhetorically democratic matrix or a biopolitical seed pod, the popular belief in UFOs has both broadened and deepened incredibly. Fairly recently, in fact, it has been revealed that the Pentagon maintained a top-secret program specifically obsessed with extraterrestrials. This clandestine Department of Defense desk known as the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program operated from 2007 to 2012, and it gobbled up about $20 million along the way, not to mention various documents that have been released through the Freedom of Information Act, basically requests that indicate that after the Roswell case, there, was, there were actually several reports of human abduction, abduction cases. Uh, the report includes a list of alleged biological effects of UFO sightings on human observers between 19, actually from 1873 and 1994. Compiled by the Mutual UFO Network, the reported effects of UFO encounters include unaccounted for pregnancies, apparent abductions, paralysis, and experiences of perceived telepathy, teleportation, and levitation. The report concludes that there is sufficient evidence to support a hypothesis that some advanced systems are already deployed and opaque to full U.S. understandings. The preponderance of the evidence is building, and we're seeing what only can be described as an incremental disclosure of the UFO UAP reality. So the government has gone from covering up the truth, and that's, of course, Roswell and everything else afterwards, to now owning it. They want to own a version of the narrative, okay? One version of the narrative. There are plenty of other versions of the narrative to deal with, and everybody in this audience tonight has a different version of the truth, a different version of the narrative that they want to have exposed. We're never going to get it from the government. So if you want disclosure and you're expecting certain things to be said, you're not going to get those things said to you. This is the closest I believe we're ever going to get to having things land on the White House lawn. Because these UFOs or whatever it may be may not be landing on the White House lawn. They may be landing in China. Or, would that bother you, though, if they landed in China or Russia? Maybe, yeah. It, it, and it's because who are they making the deals with? Are they making the deals with us? Are they making the deals with them? I mean, back in World War II, we thought that the aliens were making the deals with, with uh, Hitler. And there's a lot of evidence to show that there was stuff like that being uh, discussed and bannered about. Uh, in fact, Project Paperclip, uh, about the Russian scientists, all this 
uh, stuff about how we couldn't get to the moon without the Nazis. These are the things that, uh, you know, the military, I think, had a lot to cover up, or the government had a lot to cover up, and they used the military as patsies, because it bothers me that now, in 2022, Navy uh, personnel, they no longer need a psyche valve, or they no longer are being ridiculed for reporting UFOs. However, the 509th had something happen back in 1947, and they have not been apologized to. These were very capable men. They had the highest clearances. They were loading bombs on the planes. They would have known whether or not some top secret balloon crashed at Roswell. A farmer had to report it, so it wasn't as top secret as you think it was. The whole balloon thing was shown on the Roswell Daily Record, which once again stops this whole argument of whether or not it was top secret. It wasn't top secret. Then comes the 1994 report that stated, well, it was a mixture of everything from high dive to the crashes to, uh, you know, uh, Bogle. And then they're saying that the gondola high dive experiments were happening over White Sands in 1956, 1957. That does not coincide with 1947, not in the least. Saying that they were, in fact, even I can tell you in the report itself, in the 1994 report, it said that the people of Roswell and the military were mistaking anthropomorphic dummies that were being hurled off of mogul balloons. But later they say, well, no, they weren't hurled off of mogul balloons. They were hurled off of experimental gondolas off aircraft, and they were being dropped over White Sands. And if anybody were to find them, they would get a $25 reward. So what they're saying is, is the people of Roswell were stupid. That we were smearing together all of the events. What they were saying is those men who loaded the bombs on the Enola Gay were stupid. But yet they were the best men we had fighting post-war. And they fought during the war, okay? They were the ones that loaded the planes. They're the ones that made sure the bombs were getting out. They made sure that this country was safe, yet no apology, no attempt to try and change the minds of people about Roswell, not even a mention in these new congressional hearings. In fact, if you were to ask any young person today about UFOs, they'd say, oh yeah, they became reality in 2007. They became reality in 2017. What's Roswell? Oh yeah, Area 51, right? See, they don't know the story. That's sad. And it's like I was saying, telling Don, I said to Don, I said, if people don't know the history, how the hell are we going to be able to talk about what's going on now if we don't know where we've come from? We're the last of the breed that gives a damn. And that's the problem, okay? We need to be able to tell the story and not be afraid to tell the story, at least in a way that has no real mythology linked to it, no tall tales, no urban legends, okay? We don't have to say that aliens crashed at Roswell. They didn't know what crashed at Roswell. We don't say a flying saucer crashed at Roswell. They don't know what crashed at Roswell. A disc, let's leave it there. A disc with bodies of occupants that they had no idea. They didn't know even what they are. They didn't know how to classify them. They didn't know what to say about them. They were completely and utterly confused about what they were dealing with. Obviously. Otherwise, we would have known. Otherwise, it would have been revealed instead of being said it was some top secret thing. They had no idea what it was. If something's top secret, you best know what it is. And they didn't, allegedly. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero. Coming up, we're going to have enough time to get a few questions from the audience. So stand by. We're going to do that. We're coming to you live right now from the International UFO Museum and Research Center right here in Roswell, New Mexico. We'll be back with more. Don't go away.
If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-333-1750. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-333-1750. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-333-1750. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-333-1750. 800-333-1750. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Don't do what I did and run out. If it's working, don't quit. Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite. No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E.com. Oh. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomoflea free. Nomoflea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomoflea free this week at Dynavite.com. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If your car is no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. Lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild, replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense. And a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment. And with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco. Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans, about the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800. Five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. We are live in Roswell, New Mexico. Seventy fifth anniversary, and we're glad we're here. And since we have a very long, we got about ten minutes here. We got a very long uh, segment to fill up. I want the audience to ask a few questions because we're going to bring up Mike Barron in just a bit. And so, if you want to start, Ron, just uh, you know, people raise their hand. Ron will shove a mic in front of you, and don't be afraid to speak up. Go ahead. Howdy, Clyde. Hey, it's Ryan Gable from The Secret Teachings. Welcome. Give him a big hand. Thank you. Yeah. So, so I have a question for you. I've asked you this before. Do you know about the Idaho National Laboratory? Yes, I do. It's a collider type of thing. It, Idaho had a collider. Livermore has a collider. Everybody has a collider. So it's up there. It's not necessarily in the Pacific Northwest, but it is about two and a half to three hours east, southeast of Boise, Idaho, which is where Kenneth Arnold is from, right? Right. Mm -hmm. 
Idaho has the highest per capita rating for UFO sightings in the country. They built at the Idaho National Laboratory. We know about Los Alamos, Oak Ridge, Hanford, etc. Right. They not only stored nuclear material from Hanford at the Idaho National Lab, they also built nuclear-powered vehicles, nuclear-powered planes, or at least experimented with that. They detonated the largest non-nuclear bomb out there at the Idaho National Lab, and they have a slew of UFO sightings that go back decades. And yeah. So it's up there in the Pacific Northwest area, and this is really interesting. I know you love the synchromysticism like I do. They're building many reactors for NASA right now, fission reactors, that are called Marvel. And what is the most popular movie right now? One of the most, Marvel's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, right? Right. And then you have, I just heard this, Oak Ridge National Lab. They're also building an ion accelerator yes. similar to CERN. So you've got these national labs that are doing things very but similar. They, their, their purpose, though, is going to blast a hole. They, they're going to fire a, a, a focused laser. For the mirrorverse, right? That's yes. what they were and trying they to do. and they want to go into something called the mirrorverse. And they're going to fire a laser into the mirrorverse, and they're hoping that if they open up a portal, they can welcome in beings from the other side. Right, and that's what Jordy Rose said, the inventor of the D-Wave quantum computer. He right. said this is probably going to be like cosmicism that Lovecraft promoted. These are going to be immensely powerful, intelligent beings right. that are not going to probably care one way or another about us. They might observe. We might get in their way, but opening these right. doorways through atomic bombs, atomic energy, and quantum computing is probably right. going to allow them to walk into our world. Well, I've always thought to myself something that it's funny you bring up, you know, whatever may rock, walk into our world. You know, what fell into our world back in 1947? And how did we handle it? What did we do with it? Did we kill off whatever it was that came down, or did they die in the crash? That's what I was always wanting to know. And if we did kill them off, don't we have some debt to pay to some alien race? And is this why we had abductions? Is this why we had that deal, allegedly, that Eisenhower made with the aliens? Is this, uh, is this why now the government decides that they want to make the rules and change the narrative? Because they know that if they're experimenting with protons and their, uh, neutrons and electrons, if they're experimenting with particles, if they're experimenting with uh, quark cannons, that they are going to open up a portal and that we are going to see more and more instances of things getting through. This has been going on, and who was, I think it was Don Schmidt that said last night, he said, you know, back when Enrique Fermi was with the other, with Oppenheimer and the other uh, scientists at, at the nuclear Trinity site, and they were about to set off the bomb, he bet everybody a dollar. He said, I'll bet everybody a dollar that when you blow up the bomb, it's going to turn into a huge whirlwind and it's going to collapse the universe. Didn't happen, but they thought it would, but they did it anyway. What about the God particle? Remember that? We, a lot of people think that the universe basically ended in 2012 when they discovered that God particle, a very similar right. concept. Well, they're already talking about the idea of a space vacuum bubble that may be eating the universe as we speak, and this is why things are changing the way they are. This is why we feel like we're in an upside-down world. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And people are like going, why doesn't anything make sense? Well, it's because somehow we found that particle it became abstract and it became, we, we couldn't control it. And so if you can't control it, we wouldn't know if we went into another dimension. It would be like just every day. The earth will though, and this is why the earth is doing what it's doing because the earth has been slammed into another universe. We don't feel it because I mean, you, you've heard that old saying in the Bible that says you'll pass through like a twinkling of an eye. It's exactly what it is. If there is some sort of disturbance in the space time continuum, you'll never know. And the reason why is because you're going to wake up just every other day with the same time that's been given to you rather than the time that exists. Light changes, we change, and we eventually realize something is not right with what we're doing. People are acting bizarre. Governments are acting bizarre. Why is the clock ticking? Why is the calendar being sped forward? And it's because, and this is my theory of retrocausality, there's been an event that has taken place in the future that we're all feeling right now, and eventually we're going to find out what that event is. I'm going to pass the mic, but I want to end on a question here for you, Clyde. Sure. What do you think personally is the most scariest thing? Do you think aliens that are helping us, that we're not really sure if they're good or evil, or do you think more like cosmicism, something that is unconcerned with human affairs? I would say cosmicism because I don't think we're lucky to have aliens that are sympathizing with us. Uh, God sympathizes with us, hopefully, but then again, he has his own will, if you will. Um, 
so yeah it's cosmicism it's the idea that you know it's the roll of the dice it's it's the it just the trickster's always in play always next question hey yes my name is jesse um, if I talk to you about the Leveland, Texas incident, do you know what I'm talking about in 1967? I think so, yes. I was, I was there that when that happened as a young boy, I, uh, apparently some aliens came down in front of a police car. People escaped. There were some prisoners. And the next day, my good buddy, whose father was involved in that, came to me and said, uh, hey, my daddy was, saw some aliens, la- no, saw, saw a flying starship last night. And we talked about it for a few minutes, and then in, in a way, and then it wasn't two years later that I realized how big an incident it was. Um, um, my question to you, you know, when we talk about aliens and ETs, we all we think about space, right? But you know, for those that have watched the abyss, I sincerely think a lot of these guys come from the ocean. And that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, the idea of inner Earth ultra terrestrials has always been. Uh, uh, concern and here's another thing it, you bring up the idea that they may be coming from an ocean that may be aquatic life that may be you know superior and can do things they say octopi they said that uh, mollusks now like octopus that they may be alien because they have a propulsion system they they can count they can talk they they recognize themselves in the mirror uh, that's some of the things that are very interesting but just the idea of an inner earth type of creature or an ultra terrestrial that doesn't come from space, that's always been something that it has been on the minds of people. And not only that, but they also have this idea too, and I don't know if you've heard this, but after Oumuamua happened, there were a number of scientists who were asking themselves, what are we dealing with when we're dealing with the extraterrestrial greys? And somebody came up with the idea, artificial synthetic intelligence has been parading the galaxy or been in the galaxy for billions of years. That the, the the creator of that created him sent them out on a mission, and now we're finally re- they're finally reaching us, and this is why they're around is because they're they're observing us, they're and sometimes they get caught and they're seen or they interact with us, but they are AI. That's another and and people from the future too. There's another theory about that. In the meantime, we're going to be back with more uh, uh, here on Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight: five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. It's 503-225-0860. We're coming to you live from Roswell, New Mexico. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. This is Al Robertson with my dad, Phil. One of the things that we've noticed is, you know, people start losing their hair many times early in life. Now, Dad, you managed to hang on to yours. Have you got some secret? Yeah, get on this keep, sir. You'll be a hairy guy like me. I've got a little gap coming up on top of mine, so I know the hair loss uh, sometimes can be a, a touchy subject with guys, and so what Keeps does is help you hang on to your hair. It's clinically proven. It's FDA approved. They have hair treatments available online. They have a physician there, so to make sure you get the right product for you. Make sure it's safe. There's no waiting rooms. There's no pharmacy visits. Keeps is delivered straight to your door at about half the cost. That's half the cost. If you have any questions, you can message your Keeps doctor 24-7. So if you're a little tired of those balding jokes, go to keeps.com slash fill. 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash fill. P-H-I-L. Keeps.com slash fill. Hang on to your hair. I'm Andrew Saul, Commissioner of Social Security. I'm here to warn you about telephone scammers pretending to be government employees 
Some of these scammers may say threatening things like you will be arrested if you don't make payments or provide personal information. Do not fall for these tricks. These calls are not from us. Real Social Security employees will never threaten you for information or money. If you receive a call like this, hang up. Never give the caller your personal information, like your Social Security number or bank account, or send money in any form, cash, gift cards, wire transfers, or prepaid debit cards. Report the call to our law enforcement arm, the Office of the Inspector General, at oig.ssa.gov. Share this information with your friends and family. News this hour from townhall.com. I'm Tasha Stevens. If you're flying this long holiday weekend, be prepared for crowded airports, full planes, and higher than normal chances that your flight will be delayed or even canceled. National correspondent Ben Thomas reports. Airlines have stumbled badly over the last two holiday weekends, and the number of Americans flying over July 4th is expected to set records for the pandemic era. The problems are already popping up with high numbers of cancellations this week, some caused by heavy thunderstorms. Tracking service FlightAware says American Airlines canceled 8% of its flights on Tuesday and Wednesday, while United scrubbed 4%. As for the highways, gas prices have eased below $5 per gallon nationally, but they're still high, and government data suggests Americans are driving a bit less, with demand for gas down about 3%. I'm Ben Thomas. Well, Americans will definitely pay to play this 4th of July. According to Farm Bureau, cookout foods will cost about 17% more. Biden's top economic advisor says Americans will continue to pay high prices due to the administration's world agenda. When asked on CNN to explain high prices to American families, National Economic Council Director Brian Deese said, quote, what you heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order, and we have to stand firm, end quote. American is offering us pilots a pay boost. Rhonda Rockstra has more. As airlines say they're facing a pilot shortage, the Fort Worth-based carrier is offering to bump cockpit checks by 17% through the end of 2024. That means a senior captain on a big plane like the Boeing 777 could earn a base salary of about $425,000 a year. American's offer comes after United struck a deal to give its pilots pay raises over the next 18 months. United pilots are voting on that offer through mid-July. Pilots at Delta, Southwest, and Alaska also in contract negotiations. Rhonda Rockstra reporting. More on these stories at townhall.com. First, we decide where we want to go. Then we need to know the best way to get there. Hi, my name's Adam Barada. I'm the owner of Advantage Gold. We're the highest rated precious metals firm in the country. We teach people how to own physical gold and silver. Now, we've won the Best of Trust Link Award four years in a row because we educate our clients on how to buy gold and silver the right way. We don't pay celebrity spokespeople millions of dollars. We'd rather pass that value on to you. Call 800-900-8000 and speak with one of our experts. We'll send you a free gold kit along with my latest number one national best-selling book, The Great Devaluation. Call 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000. Get the best information, the best process, the best service, the best value. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Call 800-900-8000. Advantage Gold is not an investment advisor or a tax advisor. Consult with your financial advisor before investing. It's tough relying on unemployment payments, even worse when those benefits are delayed because of a cyber attack. That's the deal for thousands of people in several states. A company called Geographic Solutions informing clients that a cyber attack disrupted the processing of jobless payments and job-seeking efforts. Now, the company has told Tennessee officials that their system will be up before the 4th. Problems with jobless aid also hitting Louisiana and Nebraska. Jason Walker reporting. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is appealing the U.K. government's decision to extradite him to the United States. His lawyers say that Assange would face inhumane treatment in the United States and that he would not be able to receive a fair trial. Assange has been in custody in the U.K. since 2019. News and analysis at townhall.com. 
New York's legislature approves a sweeping overhaul of the state's handgun licensing rules. The bill is almost sure to draw more legal challenges from gun rights advocates who say the state is putting too many restrictions on who can get a gun and where they can carry it. At a news conference, New York Governor Kathy Hochul said state lawmakers must take action. We view them as only temporary setbacks because I refuse, as I've said from day one, I refuse to surrender my right as governor to protect New Yorkers from gun violence or any other form of harm. We're not going backwards. They may think they can change our lives with the stroke of a pen, but we have pens too. At a press conference earlier this week, the Democrats said that she did not need data to support her gun control measures. When asked by a reporter if she had any numbers supporting the claim that concealed carry holders are the ones committing crimes, Hochul says she didn't need any numbers. More on these stories at townhall.com. I'm Tasha Stevens. Duplication, nude conspiracies. Oh my god, Clyde Lewis was right. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, is Ground Zero. We're coming to you live from the International UFO Museum and Research Center in Roswell, New Mexico. It is the 75th anniversary of the Roswell event. Whatever you want to think happened to Roswell back in 1947, but uh, the military has not addressed it, even though they're addressing other UFO sightings, which of course is, I think, a, I think it's, a, a, it's a nice thorn in the side of those who served. And I think that maybe we need to have some posthumous apology or at least uncovering what happened here at Roswell because there are a lot of things that just don't add up. And the entire UFO event 75 years ago created the need to separate the Army and the Air Force. It created the need for Truman to uh, create the national security apparatus. Groups like the CIA and the NSA were brought in to look into UFOs and it was eventually realized that some of these intelligence agents were former Nazi agents. And it was very telling how far a country would go to get down to the bottom of what came from outer space. Project Blue Book, the Air Force entity studying the UFO story investigated over 12,000 reported UFO sightings between 1947 and 1969 before Blue Book was even terminated in 1970. Of course, the home base for Blue Book was Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, again, where Delta 18 is going to be. And so you look at Blue Book, you look at all, Grudge, you look at uh, all the other, uh, I guess you could call them projects, PR stunts, whatever they are, many incarnations have gone awry, but for some reason the new incarnation of this inquiry is taking hold, and we're seeing and hearing about meetings, special meetings, so the government has always wanted to own the narrative when it comes to aliens and UFOs. They've become, uh, quite literally, the Ministry of Truth. 
unidentified flying objects become unidentified federal objects, and a new American political flying saucer circus erupts. And this is where we take a look at the political flying saucer circus, because most of the people that care or say they care are those who want to head up these legislative bodies to investigate whether or not UFOs are real. I mean, we, even with all the traps of official disclosure, the complete negation of the Roswell event is very suspicious after 75 years. In 1997, they went out of their way to debunk the Roswell event with their case closed paper that said that the Roswell event was connected to Project Mogul, a weather balloon test, and the aliens were nothing but dummies that were dropped from airplanes, or actually dropped, they said dropped from the balloons in 1956. The Roswell event happened in 1947. In 1997, the military decided to smear many of the events together to indicate that the military men who were responsible for the nuclear weapons in this country were all mentally challenged and many were somehow mixing dates and events together. Even such vague concepts as the idea of the government might publish misleading statistics or that there could be people running investigations to fit an agenda sometimes is lost on most Americans that believe that their government will or they will not or would not lie to them. Now keep in mind there's no space given over to the raft of historical conspiracy theories which turn out to be completely true. Even when they're found out to be true, do you think they're going to give us credit for that? No. Do you think they give anybody credit for pointing out the obvious? No. Are we pointing out the obvious here in Roswell? Yes. And, you know, one of the guys that I really respect who is well known for pointing out the obvious is Mike Barra. Mike Barra is a New York Times bestselling author, lecturer, and TV personality whose books have sold over 70,000 copies worldwide. He began his writing career after spending more than 25 years as an engineering designer, consultant for a major aerospace company, where he was a card-carrying member of the military-industrial complex, a self-described born-again conspiracy theorist. Mike's first book, Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA, was a New York Times bestseller from Farrell House in 2007. Mike has made many public appearances, and he and I uh, appeared together on a TV show. What was it called, Mike? Truth Behind the Moon Landing. Truth Behind the Moon Landing. And it I was, was the bad guy. <laughs> anyway, give a big hand to Mike Barra. Thank you. Thanks, guys. What I love about Mike is he's no holes bar. He's tell it like it is. No BS. Yes, but he sometimes forgets that he's on terrestrial radio. You and, better not. <laughs> and uses words he shouldn't. So he's not going to do that tonight. No, I'm no, going to no, be very all. careful. And that's why I love him, because he and I, we get into some really down and dirty discussions. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And that's why we were on a TV special together. That was um, great. That was a great experience. I had to play the insane conspiracy guy. Here's, here I am, a guy who's written three books about the moon. And in all three of them, I talked about how we really went to the moon, all this conspiracy stuff, but they hired me to be the conspiracy guy. Right. But I thought, hey, you know, first of all, I asked them two questions. You gonna you gonna pay me? And they said yes. I said you gonna put me on TV? And they said yes. And I said okay. What do you want me to say? <laughs> no, that's not how it happened. <laughs> what what I thought about was, look, I know the answers to these questions, and and we're gonna get to the truth of those questions. So yeah. if my role is to play a certain character, I was willing to do that, and it, you know it was a great acting gig. But they didn't tell me it. that I was gonna play the character of a bad guy. No, well I had to, you know, look. Leland actually played NFL football for a brief. Well, not I told played. you about this guy. He's he, huge. He's, he's, he's huge, yeah. and used to be a wide receiver, and he's a big guy, and he was about ready to jump. Thank God there was like four feet of equipment between you and him because he was ready to jump across the table. Yeah. He was. I, I, and I didn't mean to make him mad. I just, I just was kind of. questions. In fact, I was acting all like, oh, they just want to know what I have to say about the moon landing. They just want me to talk about uh, Project Horizon. Werner von Braun wanted to put a moon base on the moon in 1957. And, and I'm just sitting there all like, hey, I'm just so happy to talk about it. But meanwhile, this guy is sitting here just brooding, ready to kill me. <laughs> He's just giving you. And I'm like thinking, but I'm giving you proof. What more do you want? Well, that's nothing. It doesn't mean we didn't land on the moon in 69. So yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I know where this is going. It, and then immediately. I'm <laughs> no, I don't think you knew where it was going. <laughs> I, I don't think you knew. I was I like, know. how am I going to tackle this guy when he jumps across the table? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about that experience since no. we were together. Well, it's therapy for both of us. Yes, it is. Well, I mean, we, we've learned, we've lived, we've learned, and now <laughs> we, we look back and we realized that, yeah, it's an acting gig, and uh, hopefully people understand it was an acting gig. No, no, gig. I thought you did a good job. I thought you asked very fair questions, and I, I think his, um, you know, do I wonder? He's a, he's a very 
uh, I think deep down he's a good-hearted man. Oh, yeah. But he um, he doesn't listen very well. And no. I, I think the nuances of the points you were making were – Went, went a little over his head and he got he got mad and once he started seeing the red mist it just wasn't he wasn't well then listening. everybody went back and they decided to to, to basically examine <laughs> the things that i talked about from Werner von braun right. to the vril right. to the to the rockets right. to the to the nazis having flying saucers i mean it was all they there all made it into the show a lot yeah. of it made it into the show. and i was i was pretty excited and about you know that. the one thing that we missed on that show by the way it's truth behind the moon landing it was science channel show you said it was on on tv again yeah it was on tv recently and yeah. you can pick it up i think on prime video and yeah it's a great series to watch because if you if you have any questions about the moon landing i think we answered all, all oh yeah all, almost all, i think all the main ones uh-huh. But at the end, we're shooting the very last day of shooting. And one of the things we were wrapping up was the death of Thomas Barron. Now, do you know who Thomas Barron was? No. Thomas Barron was a guy who, after the Apollo 1 fire, said, I told these guys that this spacecraft was unsafe. And if you don't know, the original crew for Apollo 1, Gus Grissom, Ed, uh, Ed White, and uh, they Chaffee, died. Chaffee, died in a horrible fire on the pad. And, oh, well, we're coming up. Yeah, the music. Yeah. Well, well I okay, finish let's, this. let's finish the story got the music coming up we're gonna be back with more with mike barra right here on ground zero give him a hand he's he's an amazing guy right here in roswell live ufo museum we'll be back Remember the last time you went to MyPillow.com and you saved big? Well, now you can save even bigger. At MyPillow.com, Mike Lindell is in the middle of a BOGO extravaganza. That's buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. Now think about that for a minute. Premium MyPillows, buy one, get one free. Giza Elegance MyPillows, buy one, get one free. Sheets, buy one, get one free. Waffle Blankets. Who doesn't like waffles? Buy one, get one free. Beach towels, perfect timing to buy one, get one free. Couch pillows, not to be confused with couch potatoes. Couch pillows, buy one, get one free. Woven throw blankets. Who doesn't like to throw a blanket? Buy one, get one free. Right now at MyPillow.com. And please use promo code KEN, K-E-N. Buy one, get one free. Check it out at MyPillow.com. Promo code Ken. Paid for by government.com. The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 800 88 888-7630 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened. But with limited quantities, you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-888-7630. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value. Reorder. Call 1-800-888-7630 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-888-7630. Don't do what I did and run out. It's working. Don't quit. Why and do all the good that's been accomplished? You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite. No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters. The bottom of my box of Dynavite. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E.com. Oh. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomoflea free. Nomoflea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomoflea free this week at Dynavite.com. 
Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. If your car is no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. And lock brake system, $1,000. Place engine twenty four hundred dollars. Truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense, and a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment, and with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans about the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote. Now, call Toco at 800-897. You are listening to Ground Zero. I'm Clyde Lewis. Mike Burr is with us tonight on Ground Zero. I saw Mike Burr's mullet. <laughs> We're comparing mullets tonight. I, I haven't cut my hair, so he's talking to me about my bullet, and I said, well, Jesus had a mullet. Yeah. I think I should have a mullet. Why not? Anyway, so we were talking about, you said that you were doing on this, this moon landing uh, special that we were on together. Right. You said you were talking about, was it Baron? Uh, Thomas Baron. Thomas Baron. Right. Who uh, apparently, uh, he said some pretty nasty things about the Gemini and Mercury projects, and uh, Gus Grissom... White and Chaffee all died in that accident. In the I, Apollo 1 fire, right. And I, and I remember uh, Gus Grissom actually put a lemon on the door. He did. He put a, a lemon sticker or something on it. Yeah, and uh, then he yeah. dies. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is where all the conspiracy theories begin about the moon landing. What did you find out about him? Well, there was, there was also some stuff where there was the time it happened was a very specific time. It was this, like, ritual alignment. There was a, it was, like, 6.37 in the evening, and there was a White House briefing on Apollo scheduled for that exact moment. Not 6.30, not 6.45, 6.37, the exact moment the fire broke out. Really weird stuff. But anyway, uh, Thomas Barron writes this report, and he testifies in front of Congress. The page, the report is 550 pages. And he hands it to the congressman, and he says, I said this, I said this, I said this, I said there's going to be a fire, I said these guys are going to die, I said there's this problem, there's that problem, the other problem. He's an engineer. And they try to poo-poo it, but he delivers his report to Congress. And then he goes uh, and leaves. And I think, I think it was literally the next day, but it was within a week or so. He's driving with his family in the car. He's got his two kids, three kids in the back seat, him and his wife. They get struck by a train at a railroad crossing. The only survivor is one of the daughters. She refuses to talk about it. The train came from a NASA train yard. Oh, my God. Now, that's interesting, okay? But here's the most interesting part. So we sent Chad and Leland down to investigate. I should have been part of it, but, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not the producer. I don't decide these things on the right. show. They go down and they investigate. Chad used to work for the FBI. He's the third guy on the show. You didn't meet yeah. him. And he says... Um, no, I went down, we, exa- we examined it, it's just an accident, this kind of thing happens, yada, 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 blah, 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 okay, great. So we're sitting here talking about that, and we're doing our takes, and, you know, we have the report in front of us, and then we finish. This is really the last shot we did for the show, right? And we finish, and everybody's breaking up, and they're walking away, and I'm standing there, and I go, I don't know, I changed my clothes, and I go back, and I look, and I pick up the report. You know what it says on the report? What? Police homicide report. Doesn't say police accident report homicide report it was a homicide this guy was killed this guy was taken out now when that happens i think okay is this just money is it you know corporate greed are they afraid that he's going to put the program to a stop but that's a fact like like i love it when when i do something and we actually discover something that nobody knew before and it's like right. dang if i didn't if i'd have spotted that I would have brought it up on the show, and it would have been in the show, and we would have had to deal with it. But, you know, I mean, well, yeah, and the it, guy was murdered, it, and the police knew it. They wrote it right there. Yeah, the but, you know, report. it's obviously, you know, the show was leaning in, in many respects away from anything that would be considered an entanglement. And, yeah, it was science and this And this is what happens when you deal with something like Roswell. It, everything leans toward what the government wants you to believe, but yet there's so many things that are left untied, so many things that are left unobserved. And when I was on with Don last night, I mentioned a lot of things, and he uh, was, we were bringing up some things. People were telling me, 
never really thought about that before, but I, I, I certainly believe this. I believe that, you know, whatever happened at Roswell in 1947, how was it so significant that Truman had to separate the Air Force from the Army? Mm -hmm. he, had to, he had to create the CIA and the NSA. Most of the CIA at the time was Nazi agents. Right. Um, Werner von Braun. What's, has anything changed since I know, that really. happened? Yeah. Werner von Braun was here in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. He was at White Sands. They even are now saying that maybe Einstein was here. Mm. Um, and if it was a top secret balloon, mm -hmm. then how is it that a farmer found it? Because if it was something top secret, you best be knowing where that thing's going to land. You know the general direction it's right. heading, and you go out and you search You'll for it. You'll be on it like Blue Bonnet. Yeah. You'll be in there like swimwear. Exactly. And it's not happening. But right. you have a farmer come in and say, oh, by the way, I found this. What is it? Then you have men like Marcel, mm -hmm. who was completely, he had clearances. He was, a, he was an operations specialist. He was, he was an intelligence specialist. Yep saying, we don't know what this is, General Ramey. What do you think it is? And then they go in, they tell the press, the press laughs at them. They go back, they grab the weather balloon, and then bam, they call yeah. it a weather balloon. It's insane how this case has, has been kind of thrown out because ha you have to go through the history to find out the flaws in what the military wanted us to believe. Right. And, and the thing is, there's also you know, the Ramey memo that he's holding in his hand, which you, if you read the words, it's pretty clear. Something with bodies crashed there. That stuff's all really important. And, you know, I have the perfect cover story for them if they really wanted one, which is that if you look at the shape of the objects that Kenneth Arnold saw, they're not saucers. They're not discs. They're these wedge-shaped. They look like a flying wing. Right. And we captured a German HO-229, a flying wing, right after the war. We captured a full-scale mock-up. We captured all the plans. We captured the plans for all the later shows, all the later versions of it. They were going to put uh, jet engines in these planes and right. stuff. And if you look at the description of what Arnold saw, it looks exactly like the uh, Horton HO-229. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, so we built a squadron of these flying wing aircraft. And we're, where are we going to test them? Well, how about McCord Air Force Base in Washington? Because that's how about, remote. How about Boeing in the Northwest? That And the that's Northwest. very remote. Martin Marietta. But then this guy up there sees them, and he talks about how they skipped along. Well, guess what? The reason flying wings didn't work until the B-2 is because they're unstable airframes. They are really hard to control, and until you have fly-by-wire computer control, you couldn't do it, right? So, And then I look at his what, he, what he drew, and it's like, okay, that's it. And then you look at the Roswell crash the descriptions of some people and it's again it's this wedge wing shaped aircraft right right um then clifford stone was the one who did who did uh said that so what's okay so let's say this whole thing happened the ufo craze starts kenneth arnold gets all this attention and well had well you we, know what we, kenneth was doing he was investigating the maury island case oh which i actually been to maury island i have to, to, to Mari Island was the case that everybody says is a hoax. Right. But it it's wasn't. Not, it's it's not, not a hoax. It's, it's probably a, the it's the linchpin of everything, and no one touches the these story. These guys found a piece of iron in a tree. And I'm like, how the hell does a piece of iron get in the top of a tree? But we found the, plot, the place where it was. It was really interesting stuff. But here's the thing. So they, they look exactly the same. So what I'm thinking is, okay, if I was the Air Force or the Army Air Force, Oh, shoot, we thought we were safe testing it up at McCord, but this guy saw it. Now it's a national sensation. Let's move it somewhere more remote. What's more remote than McCord Air Force Base, Washington, which at the time was unpopulated? How about Roswell, New Mexico? So then it crashed. Another one, then one of them crashed here. And if there's other little things, like the fact that the domes on what he drove, like the, where the cockpit would be, is moved back. Well, that's what you do to try to stabilize an unstable airframe, is you move the center of gravity back. So it accounts for like almost everything, except here's the problem, Clyde. And this is why it's not true. This is why it's not a crashed squadron of German aircraft. If that was the truth, they would have told us that. Why wouldn't they tell us that? Why wouldn't they have told us that in 1977? What if it was because back engineered it, German craft? Doesn't matter. We, it's still, it's something we would do. And there's nothing now that's controversial about flying wing aircraft or jet engines, which were a big deal back then. Yeah. So it doesn't, so it doesn't make any sense. So the simple fact, and again, it, and again, the point you just made, if it was a squadron of U.S. made based on the Horton HO 229 flying wing jet aircraft, they would have come out and scooped the thing up before Mac Brazel ever found it. And they right. didn't. So it's it's like it's a great cover story, but it didn't. It yeah, obviously nothing, didn't happen that way. Nothing gels at no, all. Nothing. No, the, the only thing that fits is that it was, 
yeah. from somewhere else. Somewhere else, and they didn't know where it was from. And that's the, that's the thing that's most interesting, is that if you analyze it in a more practical way, like Michael's doing right now, you're going to see that nothing, and four times the Air Force has tried to debunk this. They have failed each time, because none of it makes any sense in their deduction. But saying that it's just this, and you can throw it off, doesn't make any sense, because as Michael says, you know, if they knew, they would have found it, and we wouldn't have to deal with a farmer having to get a pickup truck and to make up a story. So anyway, thank you so much. We'll be right back with more Ground Zero. Mike Bear is my guest. Give him a hand. We'll be right back. SRN News. I'm Tasha Stevens. The U.S. is authorizing a new $820 million Ukraine aid package. This is the latest package of military supplies sent to Ukraine to help the country fend off Russia's invasion. American basketball star Brittany Griner appears in a Moscow area court for trial, this after an arrest for cannabis possession four months ago. New York's legislature goes all in with efforts to limit the ability of New York residents to protect themselves with firearms follows a Supreme Court ruling that Americans have a right to carry a handgun for personal protection. Among other things, the state's new rules will require people applying for a handgun license to turn over a list of their social media accounts over the past three years so officials can verify their, quote, character and conduct, end quote. They also have to turn in for references as well. This is SRN News. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are up again? Somebody has to do something. Well, someone did. That's why I use Upside. Upside? What's that? It's a free app that pays you back real money for every gallon of gas or diesel you buy. I just earned 25 cents back on every gallon of this tank. Hold on. So the Upside app is free and you actually get cash back every time you use it? No strings attached? Yep, it's awesome. Check it out. It only takes a couple of minutes to sign up. Instead of just watching your dollars go into your tank, start putting money back into your wallet with the free app from Upside. With the price of gas today, it's big news and big money. To cash out of your Upside cash, just transfer it to your bank account, PayPal, or a gift card. Upside users have already earned over $200 million. Now it's your turn. Download the free Upside app and get cash back on every gallon of gas. Use promo code EARTH for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's code E-A-R-T. Use code EARTH for an extra 25 cents per gallon back in your first fill-up. Speak. Lowering your high blood pressure could save you from a heart attack or stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. It's a new life, but I'm going to make it better. I'm coming back. Ask your doctor. Check your blood pressure. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Did you know that more than half our household energy costs go to heating and cooling? Energy efficiency isn't just good for the environment. It means lower utility bills, too. One way to reduce your energy waste is a home energy assessment. Your utility company can help. Or you can learn how to do it yourself at energysavers.gov. That's energysavers.gov. You'll learn to look for air leaks around windows and doors, check ducts for holes, and improve your insulation. Another time to cut energy costs is when you shop for a new appliance. Look for the Energy Star logo and read the Energy Guide label. And there are day-to-day -day things you can do. Lower your thermostat in winter and raise it in the summer. Close fire.
Roger Ramey says that it is being shipped by air to the AAF Research Center at Wright Field, Ohio. A few moments ago, I talked to officials at Wright Field, and they declared that they expect the so-called flying saucer to be delivered there, but that it hasn't arrived as yet. In the meantime, General Ramey describes the object as being of flimsy construction. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucer. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Roswell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the disks, which landed on a ramp inside Roswell. Our evening began to open up what the Belgians have the French have. The Brazilians have the Argentines, the Mexicans have all released their files. It's about time now. Traffic on the Grand Island Bridge has been halted, except for emergency vehicles. All onlookers and motorists are asked to stay clear of that area. Jim Fagan on the island, and apparently our worst fears of fears have been uh, realized with respect to uh, property damage and personal injury. We understand now uh, we have a confirmed call that the actual drive is on their way. Uh, uh, trying to pick us up now. Uh, it, I think that was done coming in. At any rate, the National Guard is on the way. Come in, Don. You're on live. You're on. Yes, Henry, it's, 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 not, it's not a meteor, Henry. It's, I'm standing on the edge of the crater right now, and I can look down into it, and uh, there are clouds of white hot steam rising from the face of what looks like a, some sort of a metallic cylindrical object. It's a very large object. It's, it's lying in the bottom of this crater. New York has come under attack. Witnesses claim to have seen hundreds of UFOs. It's opening fire! Oh my god! I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero, and we are coming to you live from the International UFO Museum and Research Center in Roswell, New Mexico. Mike Barra is with us. Very interesting discussion tonight. The unrelenting denial of possible extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial activity on this planet by the U.S. government has precipitated an uninterrupted deluge of accusations, acts of COINTEL Pro, and cover-ups. This contributes to conspiracy theories, fringe speculations, faux scientific inquiries, and a growing multitude of reports of unacknowledged encounters and abduction cases. In addition, the subjects become so thoroughly inundated with obvious disinformation, hearsay, manufactured artifacts, forged films, hoaxed films, videos of alien autopsies, misunderstandings by the media, missing information, added inap inapplicable information again provided by the media, and a myriad of other conflicting data which have made the subject hard to grasp for those who consider themselves skeptical. So when you try to break through misinformation and disinformation, it has always been wise to realize that no matter how smart you think you are, if you're operating with erroneous and incomplete information, you will never uncover or find a solution to any issue. It seems the case with Roswell. We have to find a way to cut through, I guess you could call the legend, cut through the mythology and get back to facts. Because as I was told last night, no one is going to look back at history unless someone puts it before them in an entertaining way. That's how we have to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, you know, I'm a, I'm a single guy. Uh, yeah, I'm not married like you. And what I find is that every five years, I ha I can well, when I do my presentations, I every five years I have to repeat myself. If I wrote a book five years ago, I got to start talking about it again because nobody's heard of it. Uh, and it, you know, and every you know when I'm out and I meet a, a girl, I can reuse all my jokes from five years ago. You know, <laughs> because people have a very short net memory right. and and they recycle. And like we've had, we've had great movies. Like Paul David's Roswell was uh, was a terrific movie with Kyle, the sleeper has awakened McLaughlin, and that's great. And we know who Kyle is. You know, yeah. we've seen him. We saw him in Dune, the original Dune. Which, by the way, did you see the new Dune? Yes. What do you think? I am supposed to say it was great. <laughs> okay. No, I, I no, I loved it. Um, <laughs> the reason why I said it is my producer, Wes, who is back home in Portland, is a Dune dude. Yeah. He is so Duned out of his mind. Yeah. 
and I love him, so I can't say anything bad about Dune. I loved the Dune show. Yeah. I loved it. I uh, like. I, I yeah, like you guys it. said something about Dune. Oh, stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I watched that and I thought to myself, just give me the money and I'll reshoot the original Lynch script and it'll, without all the grotesque stuff, and it'll be way better than that. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I it was a little I don't know, but. You know, we know who Kyle is because we saw him in Dune and we saw him grow up in all the David Lynch films Twin and all that Peaks. stuff. Twin Peaks, of course, which was pretty spectacular. But you know, these the the young the youngins they they don't know really who he is. He, to now he's, he's some old guy. There's no star power there anymore, and we need to do something like remake the Roswell movie every, every ten years and retell the story with a younger cast and people you know, stars that people. Well, they had a TV to. show though. Yeah, they did, but that ended in like 2007, didn't uh, it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it ended a but long time. It was like Riverdale ago. or something like that. Yeah, it was but, kind of hokey. Uh, but again, it's now 2022, and that was 13, 14 years ago. So there's a whole generation. Well, my stepson knows a lot about Roswell. I guess it's because he knows me and what I talk <laughs> do you about. Think? But I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he knows more than I thought he did. Yeah. Yeah, and it's you know, and I mean again, it's it's a seminal event in modern UFO lore. There's no question about it. And it didn't. It, the thing is, nobody really noticed it until Stanton Friedman came along in '77 and did those Jesse Marcel interviews. So it's like it stayed dormant for 30 years. But now we have to keep every five to ten years re reshoving it down their throats. I mean, I think there should be a Roswell TV series, and you could go into all kinds of stuff. I mean, they tried. Ron and to, I came up with an idea to do a TV series called 1947. And it yeah. would be Mari Island, Kenneth Arnold, yep, um, Roswell, and yeah. then everything in between. Well, yeah, and it started out. The, it really started the modern UFO age. And yeah. I refuse to call them UAPs because when the government tries to change a language, they're up to something. I'm just going to tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel the same way that, you know, they couldn't call them UFOs, so they had to call them UAPs, so they would own the narrative. Right. So if we say UFO, it's the buzzword for kook. If you say UAP, I mean... It just feels awkward. Don't you think saying UAP is awkward by applause? Is, is it awkward? Yeah. Yeah, I hate saying UAP. But I'm doing it because, you know, it's like they, them. It's your pronoun. You know? <laughs> but yeah, Use your pronouns, moron. But no, it, it, it just, it's just how you describe it these days. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I mean, you can show them Paul's Roswell movie, and it's an excellent film. But it's going to look, to some extent, dated to them. It's going to have limitations of the technology of the time. And they want everything flash dash and super special effects. And, you know, they need something new and different, maybe something more but like... But we want to go the approach of Independence Day? I mean, mm, or, or would it be... Uh, I mean, I think one of, one of the things that was really... Um, and uh, <laughs> American Horror Story, mm -hmm. their approach to Eisenhower, it was kind of... Uh, <laughs> Good up until the point that Mamie Eisenhower was having sex with Valiant Four. Yeah, and and, and, until, and Project Blue Book was good until Paul Heineck's mom had a had a, an affair with another woman. Yeah, then it got a <laughs> then it got a little weird. I think that and what else? Oh, Game of Thrones. Game uh, of Thrones saying, was great. Until saying the last that two Skinwalker episodes. Ranch right. was around in the 1950s. Yeah, and it was making a big deal then. No, it. Skinwalker Ranch happened in the 1990s. Right. And it's been that way since the 1990s. Anybody who tells you differently is trying to tell you a story. I'm sorry. I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. I know a lot of people big Skinwalker Ranch people. But let me tell you, it was me and Zach Van Eck and several other reporters in Utah that broke the story. Right. I know everything you need to know about Skinwalker Ranch. I don't say anything because now it's owned by the UFO Monopoly, and I don't want to get into any trouble. So, anyway, Mike Barrow with us tonight on Ground Zero. We'll be back with more. Keep it here. Don't go away. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board. All you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's right. 
free. The smartest way to hire. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Want to kill bugs like the pros do? Now you can with Maggie's Farm. Created by pest control professionals, Maggie's Farm plant and mineral-based products provide amazingly effective insect control. Ants, roaches, spiders, flies, mosquitoes, you name it, we kill it. All of our plant-based products are safe to use around children and pets and won't leave behind a messy, oily residue like some other products. Maggie's Farm. Lethal to bugs. Easy on the planet. Look for Maggie's Farm at your favorite retail store or at maggiesfarmproducts.com. Hey, guys, I'm so excited to tell you about something that's really helping me, and I think it's going to help you, too. Biotech Research has announced that it has a new supplement called Brain Peak 9. Now, Brain Peak 9 contains the nine nutrients that may help support brain function of memory, concentration, recall, and improved focus. Customers are raving about Brain Peak 9. Francis D. says it works very well for me and helps support my memory. Joe O. says, started taking it because my memory is horrible. It seemed to correct that. And Heather R. says, helps me focus and stay on task. That's what it does to me. I use it. Other memory supplements can cost as high as $129 for a 60-day supply. But right now, for a limited time, you can use discount code Clyde and you'll get a 60-day supply for just $49. There's no better time than right now to see what others have been raving about. Help improve your brain function. Go to BrainPeak9.com and enter the discount code Clyde. That's BrainPeak9.com discount code fly. Don't do what I did and run out. If it's working, don't quit. Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite. No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E.com. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomoflea free. Nomoflea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomoflea free this week at Dynavite.com. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If your car's no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. Lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild, replace engine, $2,400. The truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense. And a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment. And with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans? About the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-897-9537. That's 800 800- Michael Bear is with us tonight here at uh, the Roswell Museum in Roswell, New Mexico. We have an audience here, too. Thank you for coming out tonight, you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? As we, we, we're in this long stretch now where we can get questions from the audience. If anybody wants to ask a question, it's always open. We have someone? Or we don't? Or we do? Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Hello, Clyde. My Hi. name's Willie. Hi, Willie. Uh, nice to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, sir, what I would like to know is what happened to the nurse that sketched the face of uh, the alien to uh, Glenn Dennis? Whatever become of her? What what happened to her finally? Well, do you know what happened? No, to her? I, no, I don't. Know I, the story. I, I just know that they tried to find her and they couldn't find her. Um, they had <laughs> ideas of who it may have been, uh, but uh, apparently she, like many people involved with the Roswell case, were erased, well, and, that's, yeah. and they become unpeople. They're, that's when they want to destroy a story, they do something. They, they make a person an unperson, and well, they erase <clears throat> their names. They erase any records they have. They did. They 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 tried to do that with Bob Lazar. They do that with a lot of other people too, and I'm sure a lot of names 
that, well, that are associated with Roswell, they too are going to be erased unless we keep <clears throat> talking about them because this is, this is their modus operandi. Well, they can get rid of her, but they can't get rid of all the family that she belongs to. Yeah, if the family is still alive and if they haven't been told not to speak. Yeah. Okay. If you remember, yes, going sir. back to the Gilmari Island case, they, uh, Dahl's family was told by a man in black, or actually Dahl himself said that he, a man in black showed up and said, if he talks about what he saw in the Puget Sound, his family would not survive. They okay, would die. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd like to mention, too, uh, uh, the bodies that they found and they took away from here, like you said, there somewhere. Why do that not bring them back over here, even if they're in an aquarium, uh, seal, uh, you know, preserved in formaldehyde or something? They ought to bring them back to Roswell so the tourists can see them. Well, I don't think that'll happen. I don't think it'll happen. I, I don't think the original bodies are even intact anymore. Maybe Jackie Gleason's family. Maybe Jackie them. Gleason's family, yeah. Okay. But, you heard that, you heard but that no, story. I, I, yeah. Jackie Gleason saw. Tell us the story about well, Jackie Nixon, Gleason. Well, this Nixon. is Jackie Gleason swears up and down. He's told this told the story to many people, I think, publicly in an interview. That one night, you know, in the 70s, Jackie Gleason, if you don't know, was an American comedian. He was huge. He was a gigantic TV star in the 60s and 70s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. The Honeymooners was the show. Yeah. And he was friends with President Nixon. And in, I guess it was 72, um, Nixon shows up basically at his place in Miami Beach. I think Nixon was vacationing in Florida. And Nixon's driving, no Secret Service, and says, pulls up and says, get in the car. And Jackie Gleason comes with him because he knew Jackie Gleason was interested in UFOs. And he drove him to some base in Florida and took him into the freezer and opened it up. And there's three alien bodies, the typical grays, you know, on ice um, in, in Miami. And Gleason swore up and down till the day he died it was true. He even told the woman that he, that Alice, uh, oh, yeah, he told her too, Alice, yeah. the one that played Alice yeah. uh, in the kisser to the moon. Um, he oh, told her. Have you heard the Shirley McLean not, not Shirley McLean story about Ronald Reagan? What? Oh, okay. I got to I got to try to do this quick. I can do okay. it. All right. So, yes. so Shirley McLean told Jordan Maxwell before he passed uh, this story that she was at the White House in the '80s visiting Ron and Nancy. They were friends. They've been friends forever. And they're in the residence. And uh, Nancy says, "You know, Shirley has. You know, we know you're interested in UFOs. Has Ron ever told you about our UFO experience?" And she says, "No. I'd like to hear it." So the, the story is, Ron and Nancy are coming home for, like two o'clock in the morning on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood one night in like 1961. And back then, it was almost a dirt road. I mean, it was again very unpopulated. And this, uh, there's bright object is is trailing their car. And then it passes very low over their car, flying saucer, lands on the road in front of them, and their car dies. And the thing opens up, and out come aliens. I don't know, I don't know what the description of them was, but you know, they come out, and they walk up to the driver's side window, and he stands there. And Ron, lo Ron looks at Nancy, and he says, well, what do you think I ought to do? Yeah. And she says, well, I suppose you better see what he wants. It just sounds like my mom and dad, right? Yeah. And so he rolls the window down and asks him what he wants. And the alien says, you're working for GE. And he says, yes, I'm, I'm the host of GE Theater on the Air, I think it was called. And she, they said, GE are financed by our enemies. And we want you to quit that job. And we want you to run for governor of California. And after that, we want you to run for president of the United States because we believe in freedom and low taxes and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, they don't. They want control. It's just little, literally like the Vorlons and the uh, Shadows from, uh, from Babylon 5. Right. And he said, OK, I'll do that, uh, which, you know, I would probably say anything to get him out of there. And that's, that's the story. And, and she repeated that story apparently to other people because I've talked to two or three people that she told that story to. And, and Jordan was not lying. And that's how he got into politics. They agreed. They set up all the financing, the kitchen cabinet, they used to call it, and got him into politics and made him president. That's amazing. I, I never heard that story. It's as good as the Jackie Gleason. Uh, that is good. That's wonderful. Well, there was that other one, too, where he, they were at a party, and they had a screening of E.T. And at <laughs> the end of it, he had tears in his eyes. He goes, not many in this room know that this is true. This story yeah. is a true story. Yeah. And I remember I had a friend named Tony who went to a junket for War of the Worlds when Steven Spielberg was there. And he asked Steven if it really happened. And Steven said, yes, it happened. That Ronald Reagan said to the people when they were showing E.T. at the White House, he said that. He said that not very many people in this room know that this is a true story. 
that this is actually something that has happened. So Reagan was a true believer in aliens, a true believer in in uh, extraterrestrials. Like I said before, when this show began, I said <laughs> the conversation with Gorby was the thing that got us to the peace talks. Yeah, and I, I would be too if one had landed in front of me and they came out and talked to me. I'd be like, yeah, okay, I believe in you now. Yeah, exactly. I've had personal experience. Anybody want to, as we're getting closer to time, if anybody want to ask a question or, you know, Should give an experience or we can keep telling stories and gather around the radio, grandma, grandpa. Kids, no. dog, anyone? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, uh, I think that there's enough information now. And, and I did a whole show, like you said, we did about the memo, the Ramey memo last right, night. Right, right. And the Ramey memo, it was funny because I knew about the Ramey memo being uh, analyzed, but I didn't know how detailed the Ramey memo was. I got into some documents that were in aftermath.media, reading these documents, and I was just floored is what I was reading. And having Donald Schmidt there yesterday. Yeah, Don, yeah. They tell me all about how they did the information, how they got it out there, and how you have, like you said, balloons, um, victims, bodies, Fort Worth, Wright Patterson, all these words in the memo. Yep. And you can pretty much use your imagination to figure out just what they were saying. Well, and here's the thing. All those phrases, all those terms, all those parts of the story were out from Marcel and from others for decades before anybody had the technology to, to Photoshop and analyze those, those doc, that document that he was holding. And it was, it was just thin onion skin paper. So of course you could see right through it. We used to use that at Boeing when I started at Boeing in like 19, I'm not going to say, but it was a long time ago. And, and so it's completely believable. And there's, they're not fooling around with it. Those words are really there. So all these aspects of the story are confirmed right there in what he's holding in his hand. It's amazing. For sure. it's, uh, Michael, it was so good to have you here in Roswell. So good to have you on the program. Give Michael Vera a round of applause. He's amazing. Now, you got to save your energy because coming up is one of my favorite people. Paul Davids is going to be here to talk about Roswell the movie. Some of the other stories, he's a great storyteller. We know he's a great storyteller because some of the things that we've seen that he's produced are amazing. He's coming on Ground Zero. Stay tuned for that. Don't go away. It's that time of the year again. Pollen in the air, smoke in the air from all the fires. Well, you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh-smelling air. Eliminate odors, kill mold, mildew, and bacteria and viruses. You do it with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier. It uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It doesn't mask or cover up bad odors and pollutants. It eliminates them. It's called the Thunderstorm because it purifies the air in your home and provides you with pure, fresh air just like after a thunderstorm. Right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for a whole home protection. You'll get three units for under $200. That's a fraction of the cost compared to other air purifiers. It can go for over $600. Put one in your basement, bedroom, family room, kitchen, or anywhere you need a clean, fresh air place. This is a special offer, and you're getting three units for under $200. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and put in discount code Clyde3 to save $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com, discount code Clyde3. Shipping is free. I'm Andrew Saul, Commissioner of Social Security. I'm here to warn you about telephone scammers pretending to be government employees. Some of these scammers may say threatening things like you will be arrested if you don't make payments or provide personal information. 
Do not fall for these tricks. These calls are not from us. Real Social Security employees will never threaten you for information or money. If you receive a call like this, hang up. Never give the caller your personal information, like your Social Security number or bank account, or send money in any form, cash, gift cards, wire transfers, or prepaid debit cards. Report the call to our law enforcement arm, the Office of the Inspector General at oig.ssa.gov. Share this information with your friends and family. News this hour from townhall.com. I'm Tasha Stevens. The U.S. is authorizing a new $820 million Ukraine aid package. It's the latest package of military supplies sent to Ukraine to help the country fend off Russia's invasion. American basketball star Brittany Griner appears in a Moscow area court for trial, this after an arrest for cannabis possession four months ago. Griner being led to the hearing in handcuffs with photographers on hand to grab shots. At a closed door preliminary hearing on Monday in a Moscow suburb, Griner's detention was extended for another six months to December 20. The Phoenix Mercury Center and two-time US Olympic gold medalist was arrested in February at a Moscow airport. Police say she was carrying vape canisters with cannabis oil. Griner could face up to 10 years in prison if convicted of large-scale transportation of drugs. I'm Charles Duladesma. Unvaccinated Army National Guard and Reserve members cannot participate in drills. That according to an announcement by the Army. New York's legislature goes all in with efforts to limit the ability of New York residents to protect themselves with firearms. This follows a Supreme Court ruling that Americans have a right to carry a handgun for personal protection. Democrat Governor Kathy Hochul said that she intends to sign the Democrat-backed measure into law. Among other things, the state's new rules will require people applying for a handgun license to turn over a list of their social media accounts over the past three years so officials can verify their character and conduct. Gun rights advocates say the legislation not only violates the Second Amendment, but also privacy and free speech rights. Also, people applying for the license will have to get four references to be approved. More on these stories at townhall.com. If you have certain chronic conditions, such as heart disease, asthma, diabetes, and you're 19 years of age or older, 52, 36, 42, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I'm going to ask my doctor about getting vaccinated with Prevnar20. We're learning more about the bribery admission scandal. An ex-Georgetown University coach has been sentenced to prison in a bribery admission scandal. Correspondent Norman Hall reports. Former tennis coach Gordon Ernst admitted accepting nearly $3.5 million over a decade to designate the children of deep-pocketed parents as recruits, even though they weren't Georgetown-caliber players. His two-and-a-half-year sentence is by far the toughest punishment handed down so far in the sprawling college admissions bribery scandal. Seeking leniency, his lawyer said Ernst, who was paid $55,000 annually, was surrounded by families with wealth and prestige at Georgetown, told himself he wasn't hurting anyone. He's among 54 people who have been convicted in Operation Varsity Blues. I'm Norman Hall. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Tasha Stevens. 
The Biden administration Friday proposed up to 10 oil and gas lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico and one off the Alaska coast over the next five years, scaling back a Trump era plan that called for dozens of offshore drilling opportunities, including in undeveloped areas. Administration officials said fewer lease sales or even no lease sales at all could occur with the final des decision not due for months. The Interior Department has suspended lease sales in late January because of climate concerns, but was forced to resume them by a U.S. District Judge in Louisiana. The Biden administration cited conflicting court rulings about that decision when it canceled the last three lease sales of the previous offshore leasing cycle. Global shortage of computer chips forcing General Motors to build 90,000 vehicles without certain components during the second quarter. More on these stories at townhall.com. have five seconds five three two one oh my god you guys another space shuttle exploded <sighs> well there's only one thing to do let's paint painting the To get through tough times When shuttles blow up It's not always an accident What do you mean not an accident? Who is this guy singing? And who am I? A conspiracy fly Did you know NASA means deceive in Hebrew? I did not The Denver airport was built by the Illuminati Peter, show that fly out of here. I will as soon as I find out if he has a band from the Apple Store podcast I can listen to. I do. It's fly on the wall dot buzz slash truth. First reconfigure your DNS server. Then download a VPN and get the Tor browser. Ground zero. <laughs> The loudspeaker spoke up and said. The loudspeaker spoke up and said. The I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. Ground Zero coming to you live tonight from the International UFO Museum and Research Center in Roswell, New Mexico. So I have a few people hanging out here. It's getting late, but we're here. It's been a long day. But, uh, of course, we're here to talk about Roswell, talk about the history. It happened so long ago, 75 years ago. The event is becoming more of a legend now than most of the witnesses have died. A lot of mythology about it. Some of them giving deathbed confessions about what they saw, what they handled, some of the crash material. And to attempt to limit unauthorized disclosure of what happened in Roswell, the Air Force employed a security mechanism known as compartmentalization. Compartmentalization controlled access to classified information by dispersing portions of research 
among several facilities and institutions. The issue of compartmentalization was significant because some UFO researchers assert that the persons who reported the saucer event, members of the 509th Bombardment Group stationed at Roswell Army Airfield, should have been able to recognize the debris collected at the crash site as that of a research balloon. But that's the key. The 509th possessed high-level clearances, and they were not privy to the Project Mogul or even the dummy drops because the dummy drops didn't happen until 1956, 57. They were given the job of delivering nuclear weapons, and that should include being aware of what they might hit if they fire rockets into the sky. And I don't doubt that perhaps there was an unusual combination of experimental equipment that they were exposed to and were later briefed about, but a saucer, alien beings and oaths, keeping quiet, people quiet, that would be a clever psychological operation, wouldn't it? What, what would be the motive, though? That's the question. What would be the motive in humiliating the men who loaded the Enola Gay in World War II, the men responsible for having a hand in ending the deadly war with Japan? Why is the military doing an about-face 75 years later after Roswell? Now they have, you know, they may be, maybe we should petition, I think, the government to give at least a nod or respect to these soldiers that were available or that were involved with this with this crash. Many claims of the flying saucer crash at Roswell, it rests on the description of debris collected at the Foster Ranch. UFO researchers, including those who are said to have known all about Mogul, apparently did not compare the descriptions of the, sus uh, the suspect debris with that of the components of Project Mogul. In fact, th that was seen in the desert and what was unloaded by General Ramey on the floor of reporters were two different things entirely. We know this because why would they put a top secret balloon on the front page of the Roswell record if it was top secret? They wouldn't do that. Why, why didn't they track it immediately when it came down? Because it wasn't a top secret thing. Why is it they didn't recognize it? Because it wasn't anything from this earth. What happened at Roswell was real. What happened at Roswell needs to, the story needs to be told, but, but we've had a number of storytellers in our midst that have tried to tell a story that have given us things to think about. One of those uh, gentlemen is sitting right next to me right now, Paul Davids. He's an American independent filmmaker and writer, especially in the area of science fiction, often collaborating with his wife, Hollis. David has written and, uh, Davids has written and directed several films. He's also written episodes for the television series Transformers, as well as a spinoff of the Star Wars series with his wife, and formerly known as the Jedi Prince series. Give a big hand to Paul Davids. <clears throat> I just found out that the last time I talked with Paul was when he was doing a project about my good friend Forrest J. Ackerman. And so we were kind of talking back and forth about that. But let's talk about Roswell. Let's talk about the film. We'll talk about some other things too. And I, I just want you, it, it's such a, an honor to have you here at this table because Thank of you. your work. I mean, uh, just Jesus in India is another great work of yours and several other Transformers, of course, and of course the Star Wars comics and everything you've done. So, first of all, let's talk about the Roswell movie. The Roswell movie has, I guess, ingrained into the pop culture, into the zeitgeist, exactly what happened at Roswell in your vision. Your vision's remarkable. But shouldn't there be, at least, like Mike Barra said, every 10 years, maybe a, a rehash or a redo or a, somehow a tribute to your film or whatever that we could get this off the ground again? Well, I'd, I'd have to leave that to others to decide if they want to undertake it. Uh, the Roswell movie, you can find it online if you search for Roswell, the UFO cover-up, and then put the word film. It'll pop up. You can see it. It was released in 1994. I was trying to launch it since about 19... I think 1989 is when the effort started. 1987, February 25th, is when I had a daylight UFO sighting with my two children uh, and that is really what propelled me to begin to take the subject seriously, to know that these craft exist. I'd seen it with my own eyes. And then the research began. I wanted to know uh, whatever I could, because I really hadn't read the literature in the books up to that point. It's very interesting how uh, I got into the Roswell case. Uh, it came through my connection with Donald Schmidt who was at that time the director of special investigations for the uh, Center for Advanced, uh, no, for the um, J. Allen Hynek Center for UFO Studies. But how did I get to Don? Um, it was a series of things that happened. Uh, my wife arranged for me to meet with 
Um, Robert Wise, who directed uh, the, the original The Day the Earth Stood Still. And uh, I learned from him that he believed these craft were real. And he partially came to that belief through things that people from Washington said to him while he was making the movie. He couldn't understand any rationale for a cover-up. You know, in his movie, there's no cover-up. Right. There's a craft that lands by the Washington Monument. He listened to my story of my sighting, and he referred me to Don Thinnis, who was the actor, uh, played David Vincent on, um, you know, the name of the, uh, the Flying Saucer investigation UFO? series. What was the name of uh, Roy Thinnis's? It'll it'll come to okay. me. Um, but he played a UFO investigator. And he came to my house and walked through where my sighting had taken place. And he introduced me to the Roswell incident for the first time. Why don't we hold there? We'll, we'll find out about uh, how, who introduced you to the Roswell incident and more. This is a break we're taking right now. So we'll be back again. Paul Davis is with us. An honor to have him on the program. Give him a hand. We'll be right back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. So go away. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-333-1750. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-333-1750. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-333-1750. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-333-1750. 800-333-1750. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Don't do what I did and run out. If it's working, don't quit. Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite. No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomoflea free. Nomoflea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomoflea free this week at Dynavite.com. <laughs> 
Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If your car's no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. Brake system, $1,000. Rebuild, replace engine, $2,400. The truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense. And a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment. And with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco. Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans, about the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-897-9537. That's Paul David's with us tonight on Ground Zero here in Roswell, New Mexico. So glad to have him with us. Have our audience here, too. It's amazing to hear you guys tonight. We were talking about Roy Finnis, and uh, he was the actor that was, uh, he played David Vincent in The Invaders. And we were getting into that story before we had to go to break, but let's, let's hear more from Paul about that story. Roy Finnis investigated my UFO sighting, and he alerted Don Schmidt, as I, I mentioned. Uh, Don at that time had a proposal to write a book with Kevin Randall reinvestigating the Roswell incident. This is the book that became UFO Crash at Roswell. It was published by Avon in paperback in uh, 1991. My involvement was uh, as a producer, I wanted to see this made as an important dramatic film, either feature or for television. And uh, I optioned their work and I went to Roswell many times with them while they questioned uh, those who were still alive who had had a part in the incident. Uh, I researched it as far as I could and I became uh, very persuaded of how important the case was and the uh, claims that it was an extraterrestrial craft that crashed uh, with uh, alien bodies. Uh, I saw and heard a lot of evidence to support this. So uh, I took the project to just about every network, every studio was rejected by all of them, really for several years. And then finally, when I teamed up with director Jeremy Kagan, who I had known when we were students together at the American Film Institute, uh, he set up a deal at HBO. They developed the script with us for about a year and a half. We thought we were all ready to go into production, all ready to start casting it, and then they called us into the head office and said, we're really sorry to inform you, but we're not gonna make your movie. Um, good news is you can have it back. You can sell it somewhere else. We'll have to be repaid for our costs, of course, but you know you can negotiate those things at 50 cents on the dollar. Exactly. We thought we were lost, but Showtime picked it up about six weeks later and by 1993, we were in production as the tentpole movie of the summer for Showtime with a very, very strong uh, budget at that time for a television movie with a great cast. You know, Kyle MacLachlan of Twin Peaks and uh, Martin Sheen, Dwight Yoakam, Charles Martin Smith, Xander Berkeley. These were great actors to be working with. I was with. just talking about Dwight Yoakam's performance as Mac Brazel. It was amazing. Well, we were lucky to get him. He was great. So we followed the book, UFO Crash at Roswell, very closely because so much of it was based upon uh, actual uh, testimony interviews from people who were really involved. And Schmidt and Randall uh, questioned many of them. And as far as um, any fiction in the story, well, toward the end, the last third of the story, we introduce a character played by Martin Sheen. We called him Townsend. He was a fictional character. He was sort of a man in black who wasn't wearing black. He was sort of the intel op, the insider in Roswell. We told the story as a reunion at the base many, many, many years later when Major Jesse Marcel came back to be with his comrades from that time and compare notes on what really happened. 
And here's Martin Sheen injected into this group as someone who professes to have a lot of information. And the information that he injects into the story is really compelling, fascinating, that one of the aliens was alive, that there have been other visits, uh, the extent to which the government has covered it up. He provides all of this information to Jesse Marcel that Marcel had never heard. But there's no way to prove it. And he leaves it very ambiguous. He says, you know, go, go tell the New York Times if you want. Go tell the story to the world. They're not going to believe you. And so we're left uncertain whether all these things that Martin Sheen told us were true. But a lot of the things that we incorporated that he's telling us then came from the MJ-12 documents that extrapolated upon the Roswell incident and talked about what happened later. Because there was a lot more to this story that came later. The documents themselves, of course, are cloudy, those MJ-12 documents. But <clears throat> the information in them, uh, well, I say probably, has a lot of truth to it, regardless of whether those actual documents were the ones that Eisenhower held when being briefed on this. So that's how the movie came about, and it was a great summer television hit. It was nominated by the Hollywood Foreign Press for the best television movie of 1994. And in Roswell, uh, it had a massive effect. I mean, millions of people saw this word, saw the movie, and knew the word Roswell for the first time. So uh, I think it had a lot to do with all that followed that sort of put Roswell back on the map. Of course, it was very much on the map in 1947, Walker Air Force Base and the connection with the atom bomb, but all of that had closed down. But here, they didn't want me to call the movie Roswell. They said, no one's heard of it. No one's going to know what you're talking about. And I said, does anybody know what Chernobyl means? Of course, now Chernobyl is a, is a code word for a disastrous nuclear accident. I said, someday, Roswell will have a specific meeting as strong as Chernobyl, and I think that's come true. It has. It's true. I mean, a uh, story that's endured 75 years, and uh, I mean, you look around you and you see the excitement, you see the people attending the events and, and how this has turned into a, I guess you could call it a, uh, kind of like the mecca of, of UFO investigations. I mean. But the problem we have, and the problem that I'm seeing, and what really frustrates me, is when I'm listening to newscasts, and they talk about Roswell, and they try to marry all the stories together, whether it be Roswell, Area 51, or something else, and, and they do it because they're lazy. And that's my biggest problem I'm having right now, is that we need to somehow keep the story pure. And I don't know if you can do that with time. I don't know whether there is a purity to it that can still be I think the closest to that is what's here at the UFO Museum, where you can go into the library and see framed on the wall the affidavits, sworn statements of one military officer after another who served at that time, and they all add support to the reality of the story, that this was not from the earth, and there was a massive cover-up. And I felt my role in it as someone who had been a daylight flying saucer witness uh, was to somehow get this out in an entertaining way that would tell the world and uh, have people begin to question uh, whether they had been deceived by their government for all these years, which is a fact. It's become more obvious uh, with every month that goes by. I've noticed though that there, like I, I was talking earlier that it was going full circle here because we have now the military being visited again, but now the attitude's changing. The military wants to hold on to the narrative. We have a, a, a recognizance group being started at Wright-Patterson. They're calling it Delta 18. And they're gonna be uh, looking for the skies for UFOs and everything. So things have changed. Why do you think the government's stubborn in trying to acknowledge Roswell if they're finally acknowledging that our military is being buzzed by UFOs? Well, once you open up the reality of Roswell back in 1947, you've got a lot of explaining to do about what's happened in the last half century. Right now, they're going back to 2004. They're talking about the Navy sightings, the Nimitz, the, Pr the Princeton, the Tic Tacs. And, you know, the great breakthrough we've had, and I consider it a very significant breakthrough, is that they have now conceded that these craft are real physical 
objects that can make maneuvers that our equipment cannot. We cannot duplicate what these craft are doing. We, they say they don't know the origin of them. Uh, they deny that we built them. So it's progress, they've admitted that. And it's taken the, uh, the ridicule factor away from witnesses, you see. That has been one of the most damaging things. Yeah, it has. And I, I want to bring up something about that coming up. Paul David's with us right here on Ground Zero in Roswell, New Mexico, 75th anniversary. We'll be right back. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my With SRN News, I'm Tasha Stevens. A suspect is in custody in New York City in connection with the Upper East Side murder of a 20-year-old mother this week. According to NYPD, Isaac Argro is charged with the murder of Asia Johnson, his ex-girlfriend. Police say Johnson was pushing a stroller with her baby inside Wednesday when the guy wearing all black walked up and shot her in the head at point-blank range. Police say that the baby was unharmed. The Department of Defense is sending more money to Ukraine, this time $820 million. It's the latest package of military supplies sent to Ukraine to help the country fend off Russia's invasion. Delta and American Airlines once again dealing with delays. Around 25% of American flights, 29% of Delta flights have been late in taking off. And doctor's offices seeing an increase in men scheduling vasectomies. It follows the overturning of abortion law Roe v. Wade. This is SRN News. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are up again? Somebody has to do something. Well, someone did. That's why I use Upside. Upside? What's that? It's a free app that pays you back real money for every gallon of gas or diesel you buy. I just earned 25 cents back on every gallon of this tank. Hold on. So the Upside app is free and you actually get cash back every time you use it? No strings attached? Yep, it's awesome. Check it out. It only takes a couple of minutes to sign up. Instead of just watching your dollars go into your tank, start putting money back into your wallet with the free app from Upside. With the price of gas today, it's big news and big money. To cash out of your Upside cash, just transfer it to your bank account, PayPal, or a gift card. Upside users have already earned over $200 million. Now it's your turn. Download the free Upside app and get cash back on every gallon of gas. Use promo code EARTH for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's code E-A-R-T-H. Use code EARTH for an extra 25 cents per gallon back in your first fill-up. Beak. Lowering your high blood pressure could save you from a heart attack or stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. It's a new life, but I'm going to make it better. I'll come back. Ask your doctor. Check your blood pressure. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. <laughs> Did you know that more than half our household energy costs go to heating and cooling? Energy efficiency isn't just good for the environment. It means lower utility bills, too. One way to reduce your energy waste is a home energy assessment. Your utility company can help. Or you can learn how to do it yourself at energysavers.gov. That's energysavers.gov. You'll learn to look for air leaks around windows and doors, check ducts for holes, and improve your insulation. Another time to cut energy costs is when you shop for a new appliance. Look for the Energy Star logo and read the Energy Guide label. And there are day-to-day -day things you can do. Lower your thermostat in winter and raise it in the summer. Close fireplace down.
Our evening began. To open up what the Belgians have, the French have, the Brazilians have, the Argentines, the Mexicans have all released their files. It's about time now that we do the same thing and become a part of this planetary community. Houston, we're ready for land ejection. We are set. We have a cryo press line. Roger, copy cryo press line. Obviously, the three of us were not going to learn out. Hey, Houston, we got something moving alongside of us, and uh, we don't know what it is. You know, can you tell us what it is? We weren't about to do that. Because we know that uh, the, those transmissions will be heard by all sorts of people, and uh, uh, who knows what somebody would have demanded that we uh, turn back because of aliens or whatever. <laughs> I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero. We are live at the International UFO Museum and Research Center in Roswell, New Mexico. Thank you all for coming out. Paul Davids is with us, director, writer, amazing human being. Now, here's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm going along the lines here thinking that everybody knows who Paul Davids is. I know who he is because, well, I've talked with him before. We were talking about Forey Ackerman, who was a good friend of mine, and talking about his film career and talking about Roswell. But how did you get started? Well, uh, uh, apart from the movies, the amateur movies I made when I was a kid that got the attention of Famous Monsters magazine, yeah. uh, I was accepted to be a student at the American Film Institute Center for Advanced Film Studies its opening year. It was a very, very big deal. And uh, it was a couple years after that, after I was uh, done studying there and making a film, uh, it was a series of things. I, I got a job with F. Lee Bailey, the attorney, you know, he represented O.J. Simpson. He had a daily show called Lie Detector. We would bring in guests from around the country, wire them up to a lie detector, and see whether their story was true. And uh, Betty Hill of UFO fame was one of those that we, uh, we had on the show. Dorothy Allison, the psychic detective, was a great adventure. And uh, this was after I had spent five years working for the great Hollywood agent, they called the magician of Sunset Boulevard, Paul Koner. He represented Charles Bronson and John Huston and William Wyler and Ingmar Bergman, many, many greats that I, I had interaction with working for him. And then along came an opportunity to work for the Transformer show at Marvel. Uh, a friend of mine who was working on the TV show for its first couple episodes was being pushed over onto the animated feature, the first one they made, and he was asked, how do we replace you? Who should come in and take your job? And he named me. So I was hired to be the production coordinator for the original Transformers episodes, 79 episodes. I was there for the recording sessions, you know, with Optimus Prime and Megatron, and uh, each phase of the production I had to keep track of and make sure we were on track, because this was on television every day. We were constantly producing three, four, five shows, and I got to write a few of the scripts. In fact, in a couple of days, I've been invited up to the Toronto International Transformers Collectors Convention, where I'll be a guest and we'll revisit a lot of those old Transformers sh uh, shows. So after uh, Transformers, I was connected with Stan Lee there. He was at Marvel when I was there. He was trying to get Spider-Man made, couldn't get it made, being rejected by everybody, convinced it would never be made. 
the three Spider-Man movies have now made, uh, I think, uh, about uh, see, $1.5 billion. I may be underestimating that. But in those days, it was before digital effects, and they didn't think it could be done. So after, after that uh, came the Roswell production. When uh, I got Roswell off the ground at Showtime with director Jeremy Kagan, and after that, I embarked on a 20-year career of making one independent film after another on controversial topics that I selected, topics that absolutely fascinated me, and I had the wonderful opportunity to get most of these films distributed by NBC Universal around the world on television, and they didn't dictate to me what the content of these movies should be. I made the movies they distributed them, one after another. So uh, uh, you want like to mention a few of the titles? Well, yeah. I mean, one that uh, sticks out in my mind is Jesus in India. Jesus in India, based on the book King of Travelers by Edward T. Martin. Yeah. I went to India for six weeks, traveled across 4,000 miles of India, following uh, all of the trail of cold case evidence um, that suggested that... Uh, Jesus visited India after age 13. Between age 13 and 30, there's really nothing except one sentence about his life. That's 18 years. In India, there's a lot of people that believe that he repaid the visit of the three wise men, Indian rishis, and went to India. So we made the film in India, Jesus in India. You can find most of my movies on, online. I think a lot of them are at Amazon Prime. Jesus in India is. A number of them are free. But yes, there was Jesus in India. There was the biography of the prophet of LSD and the psychedelic movement, Timothy Leary. That's out now. Finally, they just put it out there. Uh, Timothy Leary's dead title comes from the Moody Blues song, yes. Timothy Leary's Dead. Yes. And then uh, uh, many films after that. You remember the Sci-Fi Boys, I think, uh -huh. right? I do, yes. This was the history of special effects in movies, starting the really early silent days, and had a lot to do with the fabulous work of Ray Harryhausen, the great cinema master, um, and Forrest J. Ackerman, the editor of Famous Monsters magazine, and how they influenced generations of future filmmakers from the time they were children and I was one of those children very very influenced by these men Peter for, Jackson hosts that film for those of you that don't know who Ray Harryhausen is Ray Harryhausen is the man most famous for stop-motion animation and if you remember Earth versus the Flying Saucers he created the Flying Saucers for that he created Jason and the Argonauts one of my favorite movies the Skeleton Armies and uh, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Beast Flash from Twenty Thousand Titans. Beast, from, was, yeah. Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. Uh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Did he do? It came. Tw from, did he do Twenty Million Miles from Earth? Twenty Million Miles to Earth. Yeah, he did, he, he did the Emir. Yeah, the Emir, Creature yeah. from Venus. Exactly. So I did Amazing. get. I did get to meet Ray Harryhausen. Um, I visited in his home in London, and uh, he's part of this film, The Sci-Fi Boys, which you can find. It's a great education particularly for the young, because everyone who is spoiled on all the digital effects today that look so absolutely perfect and miraculous, they don't know the trail of blood, sweat, and tears that it took to get to that point when a lot of this stuff started out by young men working in their garages building little dinosaurs that they were animating one frame at a time. So that's the Sci-Fi Boys. That came out in 2006. And that won the coveted Saturn Award as the best DVD of that year. It's fantastic. Yeah, I like like uh, I mean, this is all taking me down memory lane because I used to publish a B fanzine, and uh, a lot of stories uh, like the Sci-Fi Boys and others inspired me to write some of the uh, stuff that led to Ground Zero. So Paul was an inspiration, along with several other people, Forey Ackerman, Ray Harryhausen, and those. I mean, you can, they're, they're a part of my life. They're a part of my childhood, and I really appreciate you coming on. It's like I'm, I'm with someone that's, that's deity royalty. It's amazing. <laughs> right here in Roswell, New Mexico, Paul David's with us, and we'll be back with more. Keep it here.
One of my favorite sponsors is Life Change Tea, and they're having a big summer sale. You buy three, you get one free. This summer, why not make a commitment to fill your very best? Life Change Tea is an amazing natural gentle cleanse that you can use daily for optimum gut health. I drink it every day. It's the right combination of 12 herbs and comes in three delicious flavors. You got natural, peppermint, and pomegranate. Life Change Tea has been around since 2007. It's made right here in the United States. Easy to brew, you keep it in your fridge, and you drink it daily. It's summertime, and I always want to have a big glass. That's why I drink Life Change Tea daily. Go to getthetea.com to order yours today. Use discount code CLYDE10. That's CLYDE10 to get an additional $10 off plus free shipping. That's over a $50 savings. That's getthetea.com. And use discount code Clyde and the number 10 for an additional $10 off plus free shipping. Paid for by GovMint.com. Have you heard? The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 1- 800-888-7630 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened, but with limited quantities you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-888-7630. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-888-7630 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. 1-800-888-7630. Don't do what I did and run out. It's working. Don't quit. Try and do all the good that's been accomplished. You've got to feed them right for life. Dynavite is nutrition. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite. No, 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 no. When I get to about three quarters. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite for your dog this week. We'll send you a bottle of Nomoflea free. Nomoflea flea spray kills fleas safely with no poison. Because it's a polypeptide protein molecule made from vegetable oil. Try Nomoflea free this week at Dynavite.com. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. Dynavite for life. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If your car's no longer covered by a manufacturer's warranty, repairing it can break the bank. Rebuild, replace transmission, $3,200. Manual brake system, $1,000. Rebuild, replace engine, $2,400. The truth is, once your warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. A vehicle service contract just makes sense. And a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty makes the most sense. Many other companies hit you with a large down payment. With Toco, there's no down payment. And with Toco, you can pay as you go with affordable payments. Don't waste another minute. Pick up the phone and call Toco. Toco right now to start saving big money on expensive covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle. The monthly price for most plans, about the cost of a tank of gas per month. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-897-9537. That's 800 <laughs> Independent filmmaker Paul Davids is with us tonight on Ground Zero here in Roswell, New Mexico. It's such a treat to have him on the show. In fact, I was telling him during the break that a lot of his work, Sci-Fi Boys and uh, other marvels such as these, have inspired me a lot in my career to uh, write fanzines that I did before I got into doing radio. Ground Zero, of course. And, you know, I was fully aware of Jesus in India because I was always fascinated about and what really got me into the movie, if you remember, I don't know if you know anything about Anglo-Israelism, but the idea that Jesus also not only ministered to the Indian population, but he also went to England. And that, that there's, a, there's a rumor that because of the, how England and India were you know, together, that Jesus had a way of getting over there as well. So, I mean, you know, it's just your, your film inspired me to think outside the box with regard to what happened to Jesus during those times in the Bible they weren't mentioned, so. 
just to let you. And now you're doing a Life After Death project. Tell us about that. Well, I did do the Life After Death project as a two-part movie. It's on Amazon for streaming. Um, you know, it, this happened after Forrest J. Ackerman died. He was a, a great kingpin of science fiction. He invented the term sci-fi. He had a fabulous science fiction memorabilia museum in his home. In California. Karloff. California, yes, as in Boris. As in Boris. And, uh, you know, I had been one of the winners uh, as a teenager in his famous Monsters movie contest. And then I had known him and been friends for decades. He died at age 92. He was an atheist. He didn't believe in life after death. And uh, he said, Paul, you know, when we're gone, you know, it's like turning out a light bulb. Um, it's like an old computer that you throw away. It doesn't work anymore. So he said, no, I'm not a believer. He said, I'm a, I'm a sworn atheist. He said, but, you know, if it turns out I'm wrong, you know, a, a, a after I'm gone, uh, and I, if I wake up to the great science fiction convention in the sky, I'm reunions with my friends, Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, and other of the great actors that he knew. He said, but, you know, when the party dies down, maybe I would drop you a line. Uh, and he said it with a sense of humor. He had a great sense of humor. And uh, uh, the drop you a line phrase really had a kind of a double meaning I wasn't prepared for at that time because he was, a, he was an editor. He dealt with words and lines and crossing out words. Well, after he passed, uh, I uh, was absolutely baffled. He, he died toward the end of 2008, and we had a tribute for him in Hollywood at the Egyptian Theater. I think it was in March of 2009, and there were two Canadian filmmakers there who had the first paranormal experience of contact from Forrest J. Ackerman after they went to his crypt, and they knocked on it, and they said, Fari, hi, we're here. We've come to Hollywood. We've done a documentary about you. You know we're going we're gonna to show it at the tribute for you, and on their computer, uh, they receive a capture code, Ackerman, zero, zero, zero. They were within an hour of knocking on his crib. Bizarre, really weird. That wasn't the only part of it, but that began it. And a few days later, for me, I got to say, he dropped me a line. I had a document that uh, was clean out of the computer. The ink was dry. I'm out of the room for five minutes. And I come back, and there's four words that are moist and crossed out on the document. Two of them you can kind of see through, and two of them completely opaque. And I was shocked and freaked and frightened. Uh, it was like a ghost in my house. There was no one physically there could have done it, but it was precise. The words were selected. As one of the scientists who studied this said, the words were clearly targeted. There was nobody physically there to target anything. And I, I you know, I, I freaked out at first, but uh, calmed down in the next couple of days, and I remembered what Fari said, and I tried to think about those words that had been crossed out. I didn't see how they'd have any relation to him at first. The words were spoke to Joe Amodi. Well, Fari loved, po uh, loved uh, wordplay. He loved puns. He loved names within names, words within words. And it happened that his main caretaker for the last 10 years of his life was Joe Mo. And he'd crossed out, spoke to Joe at Modi, you know, in different levels of blackness, or some ghost had. I talked to Joe Mo, I was about to ask him, do you have samples of how far he crossed things out? Did he opaque things? What? Joe didn't even let me get out the words before he said, Paul, I had an apparition of Fari after the tribute. He came to me. He spoke to me. The words I got were spoke to Joe Mo. I mean, this was, this was the beginning of an incredible adventure of feeling like I was in contact with this man that I had just loved my whole life. And so I started making a film about it. I took these materials to a science lab, a chemistry lab. They began to study the ink. Weird things started happening to the chemists who were studying this, like it was an infectious paranormal situation. They expected to have an answer in 24 hours. Three years later, they're still studying this ink and saying, this is unknown to science. We can't reproduce it. We have tried 300 things. So I want to tell you, 
I filmed them, I filmed lots of people connected with the whole question of life after death. And people say, Paul, what movie are you working on? I said, I, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. You know, it's my life after death project. You know? And uh, since I didn't have another name, I called it the life after death project. And it's two movies, there's part one and two. And if you go to Amazon and you, you know, you, you put that in, uh, Life After Death Project 1 or Life After Death Project 2, you find it, and they're still really, really popular. It came out in 2016. Life After Death Project 2, Personal Encounters, is getting more streaming than any of my other movies, all of them put together. I'm really proud of that work. We turned it into a book a couple years afterwards. Gary Schwartz, the scientist in Tucson, and I wrote a book together called An Atheist in Heaven, the ultimate evidence for life after death with a question mark. 500 pages documenting the whole Fari Ackerman case. And since the movie only went up to 2013, this covered up to 2016. It took us three years further. It's been like living in the twilight zone since Fari Ackerman died. These things did not happen to me when I was a, a younger a person. Uh, these things are real, and they're incredible to contemplate. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, like I, uh, and we have that in common because I knew Forey, and uh, I went to the Acker Mansion many times, and uh, I actually sat with him, and we watched Evil Dead together. Uh, mm. And uh, he told me stories about Bela Lugosi. He wore Bela Lugosi's ring. He uh, he, he certainly was a great man. Um, he looked like Vincent Price a little bit. In fact, he was. He said, you get me at half price, he said. He said, I'm the poor man's yeah. Vincent Price. I'm the poor man's Vincent Price, so you can get me at half price. He was funny. Uh, we got a question we're going to get to quick from Zach, and then we got to probably go because we're running out of time. Go ahead. Hi, Clyde. Uh, Long-term time listener, first-time viewer. Um, I, I have a, I've been interested about the event that happened in Socorro, and uh, it, it's, it really doesn't get talked about much. And then the other thing about it is it's pretty coincidental that at the same time, there was the Gnome Project over in the by Carlsbad, and that was part of Operation Plowshare. So, I there were a number of incidents that happened all at once, and it's like they all get thrown in together. And so, people were talking to me about Aztec the other night. So, the Aztec, Socorro, anything from St. Augustine, anything in Corona. So, yeah, each one of them, I think that we could probably branch off and talk about them if we had more time on Ground Zero. If we had another show tomorrow, I would do that. I think it'd be a great discussion, or even a panel, I would do it. Paul Davids, everybody, thank you for coming by and giving us some remarkable things to think about. We will be at the parade tomorrow. That'll be at 9 a.m., so I gotta get home and get to bed and, and uh, get up early, bright and early to be in the parade. Sure, and join us then, and who knows, maybe I'll be on another panel or something, but until then, thank you all for your support. Thank you for coming out for the 75th anniversary of Roswell right here on Ground Zero. Remember, keep your mind where they can't get at it. Keep it at Ground Zero. Good night, everybody.